First thing we're going to do is approve the minutes of uh, April 10th. Have you all had a chance to review them? And are there any yeah, changes? I had a, yeah, I had a change. Okay. okay. Tell us what it is. Um, it is that it should say um, that I met with Katie Buckley of Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Can, can you tell me where? Um, under ARPA grants. She met with Katie Buckley of VLCT and Denise Wheeler. Okay. Oh, here yes. it is. So that's on the last page. Yeah. Oh, well, you've got it. You're taking the minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So it's, on the, it's the second to last item in the minutes. Or third to last, I guess. Okay, any other changes? With those changes, can we move the minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, board orders. Um, did you need a vote? Oh, sorry. No, I did. I said all in favor. Oh, I should. I, I can hardly hear. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, every, we, we, three of us have signed the board orders. If you guys want to look at them, we can pass them over to you. But we've got enough signatures. Yeah, the first few were payroll, and then there's the collection of various checks and stuff that doesn't have any signatures on it. Um, they get signed after we sign the orders, isn't that right, Barbara? I can't, I can't hear the checks, <laughs> the checks in the board orders have no signatures no, on them. No, no, no. The the actual oh. order itself. Oh. So all of the ones that were stapled, and those were mostly like payroll. Um, the oh, last one was um, was for all of the checks. Uh oh, and well, that we one just is that one. That one was. I'm just going through it Thank out you. of curiosity. I'm so, glad you caught yeah. that. I'll circulate okay. that. Well, I'll circulate just that one around the okay. rest, unless anybody wants to see the payroll ones. But is is there something I need to bring to Sandra's attention? Oh no, we. It's, okay. it's just that she put the signature page on the second page, and we didn't notice and didn't yes. sign it. Oh, it was gotcha. a very the thick signature package. page was out of order. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm That's all. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. The next item is the Nemrut contract. Um, for doing the payroll, and that came in just a couple of hours ago. And it's somewhat complicated. There's three parts to it. One is um, offering a bulk time agreement, which gives us services for certain things at a lower rate than uh, their normal rate. Another is a suggestion that we, and Jordan, you'll understand this better than I, actually you all probably will, uh, that we have a cloud agreement instead of um, them use plugging into our server all the time. They have to call Barbara, Barbara has to hook them in, and then they can access our documents. They think that at some point we should, am I saying this right, be yeah. part of the cloud, and then we can all um, have our passwords and upload and download. But that's for the future, it's just a sample. And finally, for the payroll, they will charge at their regular rate. But I would suggest that because this is uh, somewhat complicated, and there's three different contracts, to potentially sign, we'll probably only sign two of them, not the cloud one at this point, um, that we put this off till next week. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, because yeah. it looked like the rates went out too, so we could go. Uh, Did you say it just came in hours before the meeting? Yes. Barbara, would you be able to contact RB to see if that is something that they're comfortable facilitating? Mm -hmm. I would think that they're probably the only ones that would uh, take have a strong opinion on the matter. I mean, just Do they like, facilitate us moving to the cloud when it's available? No. Uh, no. Um, my guess is they just want, rather than having to have, I don't quite understand it, but it sounds like they, because you have to like give them access to remote into the uh -huh. server, they're looking for something that just gives them credentials that'll just give them uh, the ability to do that without necessarily coordinating um, and so, that, that so you think they can act, there's actually there's a way for them to do that now without us being in the cloud I don't know yeah I'll, I, I will I will ask yeah. because that's the way Sanders always done it and that's the way Nimrick done it it's done it and I think we all just thought that was the only way for them to get in it may be at this point I'm not sure what the okay. technical yeah, hurdle absolutely. is but absolutely I'll check in so that'll be um, put off to the next agenda. 
Hi, Rose. We started a little early, but Gabrielle's taking minutes till you're ready. Okay, the next one is the Sullivan and Powers contract. You all saw that on your document, Google's, the Google Docs. Um, the thing that we noticed is that it's for a thousand, was it a thousand, it was for 1,700, I'm sorry, it was for 1,800, but we, they had only budgeted 1,700 in the fiscal year 24 agenda. Thousand, so, isn't it? A thousand, 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 that's what, yes, so it's a thousand dollars less, thank you. And um, they agreed to charge us the 17,000 this year. So they sent us a new copy, and they're gonna only charge that amount. And if, other than that, they haven't changed a thing. So, would you guys feel ready to vote to, let me see who has to sign this. Uh, well, there's three signature lines, so I guess they need a quorum of us to sign this. Would you guys be ready to vote on whether or not to sign this, having reviewed the document? Okay. okay. Will you please move that? So Just moved. Second. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. How about I pass it? Oh, you're busy. I'll no. pass it. I'll pass it this way. <laughs> you need a couple more signatures, and then just oh, give it to Barbara. Second to that. And I think there's two copies. There's so, so, oh, so we keep a copy, and I'll mail the other copy back to them. Okay. <clears throat> Good. So that's our auditor for the year. Um, the dog owners who have not renewed their licenses need to get. A, I said warrant, I think, but it's not a warrant. They just need a letter to remind them to pay up or there will be a warrant and their dog can be impounded. Since we don't have a, um, an animal control officer, would somebody like to move to authorize Barbara to send out the letters? So moved. Second. 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 No. I, I'm not gonna impound anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna send a reminder. Please, you're late, please register your dogs and add a $4 per dog late fee. So it's just a nudge. I can drop some dog food off. I'm sorry, what? I can drop some dog food off. <laughs> okay, any discussion on that? We, got a, we had a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. If you promise to feed my dog, you're welcome to comment. <laughs> I, I will tell you, do you want to know how many we're talking about? So, there are 73 dogs who were registered last year who are not yet registered this year. There are more dogs in town that are not registered, but we just don't know who they are. But those 73 dogs are owned by 36 people, so I only have to follow up with 36 people. It's just among them they own 73 dogs. If you want, I can take a look at that list. Just knowledge some of those animals might have passed or something. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. okay. What do we have to do to have an animal control officer? Um, oh, Barbara and I started working on that today. We, have, we are going to put out an ad on Front Porch Forum. We actually have a couple who've shown interest, but then they don't follow up. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of them may yet. If you know anybody who wants to be animal control officer and constable, that would be wonderful. Okay, we're at the public comment uh, section. Would anybody like to say anything about anything not on the agenda? Puts us ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. And Lewis, you're here. Lewis um, Porter would like a right-of-way permit. He, um, Lewis, maybe you should describe sure. what you're gonna do. And I have your application here Thank if you, you. wanna show us the uh, <laughs> what you're doing here. And, and this is John of the road crew. Hey, He's hi, here to okay. check. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if you want yeah, this stuff. I don't need it. Thank okay. you. Uh, Lewis Porter, I uh, live at uh, 1118 Martin Road uh, outside Adamant. And um, my septic line actually runs under the town road. Uh, and I need to replace it. They built it uh, many, many years ago. They built it with um, Orangeburg, it's called, and it's like an early version of plastic. Those were it's cardboard. <laughs> it's cardboard. Well, it, it, amazingly, it held up for uh, 40 some odd years. But uh, so my 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 request, my proposal is to 
uh, get permission to intrude on the right of way first on one side of the road and then the other, uh, enabling me to replace well, the Well, including the road. Yeah, including which the road. Is, which yep. is part of the right of way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly right. Okay. Um, I propose doing it uh, uh, half the time so there'd be a lane of travel open. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and um, uh, as for when to do it, um, I plan on coordinating with, with the town crew. My, my suggestion would be an er, uh, early morning on a Sunday morning, uh, first light when there's relatively little traffic on Martin Road. Um, and uh, so that's my, that's my request, my proposal. Will you be doing the work yourself or you have a I will, I will be doing it, yep. And are you, this is going into an existing system? It's going into an existing system. It's all approved and all that. Yep, yep. And you're just replacing the Orangeburg pipe with Schedule 35? Schedule 35, I think a four inch pipe inside a six inch pipe. Uh, so that if I have to replace it again, I can just leave a new pipe okay. in. Not, not that I'll have to in my lifetime, but. Or not. Okay, so what we're concerned about is the restoration of the roadway. Yep. And if there's any ditches we're going through, you know, I haven't been up to the house, but if we're going to go through a ditch, the ditch kind of has to be restored too. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. There, there actually isn't a ditch on that side, um, so I, I, so I, I sh that shouldn't be a problem, but certainly <clears throat> we'll restore the ditch as well. Are you using a backhoe? Yep. And you're calling dig safe? Yep. And we propose that you just do it in one shot. And we'll close the road. Got it. The day you're going to do it. Perfect. And it should be a lot easier for you and you'll just have to wait. Sound, sounds perfect. But I, yeah. our position to us, we're not that worried about the restoration of the road because if you do a bad job, it's your pipe. It, it, yeah, it's my pipe <laughs> and also uh, three quarters of my entire family lives on the road. So I'll be here from them before I hear from you. <laughs> you'll be putting in stone on the top? Or? Uh, yeah, I'll be putting uh, uh, gravel at the bottom around the pipe and then and then stone on the top. Okay. I don't see a problem with that. So Peter mentioned tamping down as an well, issue. Yeah, compaction, but I'm saying that's what I'm saying. It's going to be his pipe. Yeah. So he's he's got to compact it. If he doesn't compact it right, it's... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll compact it. Okay. Well, are you using a plate tamper or a... Uh, we'll, we'll rent a uh, yeah, plate tamper. Yeah. And, uh... Do you have any switch your time table right? Uh, my timetable is good, still working so far. So I, I'm I'm uh, at your uh, at your uh, preference in terms of timetable. I'd suggest uh, July or August when the little conditions are dry. But. Okay. Would you be okay? If we dropped off road close signs and you could secure the road. Absolutely. And we're not going to have an inspector there for the backfill. Sounds good. Because like I said, it's your back. It's your pipe. Yep. Sounds, Sounds good, good to me. Problem with it. Okay. Is there a is there a particular type of uh, Stone you suggest for the top layer? We we've been using three quarter. We like that. Okay. That's, now we got another problem with the road standards. They're talking for a fine gravel on top mm -hmm. of that, but we haven't been doing that so far. How, how, how deep are you going to be digging? Uh, it's about four feet. Um, sorry, this is a state standard, John. No, your the town has that. I don't know if it's been adopted or not, but we've been using a three quarter stone for a finish. Oh, it's the back road standards. Yeah. yeah. I and see. then there's something about a fine gravel, but we've never, we haven't been doing that. It's just too hard. Mm. So three quarters will be fine. Okay. Three quarter granite or three quarter uh, river stone? <coughs> uh, we've been getting it, uh, it's like a, like a, it's a granite stone. Yeah. Great. Okay. I, I assume it's plant mix. Yeah. That's what we're using. Uh, it's a general question for the room. How common is it for someone to do their own work that involves digging up a road. Well, I would do it. What's that? I would do it if I had the option, yeah. Uh -huh. And the reason I'm not concerned is, is that if he does a bad job, it's it's not going to come back on us, and we'll just fill it back in, and he'll be out of the sewer pipe. So it's, It might come back on somebody's car, though, if it was not, you know, not done properly. No, it's, it's on him. He's got more in this than anybody else with the compaction for his pipe. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to back <clears throat> So in the permit, then we should. Oh, did you finish your? Did you get your question answered? Um, mostly, yeah. I uh, I'd recommend if you can, if there's a, uh, probably go with uh, a jumping jack. Um, okay. Instead of a plate compactor. Okay. Plate compactors will only compact uh, like a foot of material at most. And the jumping jacks can generally go much deeper than that, so you'll get much better compaction, and you'll be able you to want, take. You want lifts in there? 
Do you want to schedule lift by every six inches or something like that? Um, I mean, I, generally, I think uh, would hold you me can't do hold me to it, but generally, it's it's uh, no more than every. Uh, it's like every 24 inches. It might be every every 12 inches. Uh, you have to go through and, and compact um, and take and a compaction. You have to be pass. careful with this initial because that's where the pipe is. Yeah. So, I'd, especially with a jumping jack, I guess I would I would probably be mindful of that first lift and probably do 24 inches and then um, after that try to do about every. 18 inches. 18. I know the jumping jacks are good down to about 24 inches. Uh, there was one more thing that uh, Peter suggested. Would you be able to post on form the day yep. going to do that? Absolutely. Other questions? Well, so if I'm understanding correctly then, as conditions in here, we should say any fill other than what's already in the road should be three-quarter inch gravel. Yeah. Uh, that it's going to Pardon me? Yes. <clears throat> Three quarter inch uh, plant mix. Plant mix? Plant mix? Yeah, they, <laughs> that put, some, like a they put fines in there to make it. Right. It used to be called 2A modified. Right. Do <clears throat> you okay. get that from McCullough's for your roads? Yeah. Um, that it'll happen in June or July, but certainly after mud season. I think you said July or August. Uh, oh, did you say July or August? Yeah, July or August. But okay. But I'm, I'm flexible on that, so. I, as long as it's not uh, muddy, I'm sure it's fine. Any, I could, we could just say after mud season, perhaps. Um, and that should cover it. Um, and that uh, prior to doing it, you will put a notice in Front Porch Forum of when the roads will be closed, and that you will work with the road crew to um, make sure that it's signed as appropriate during the project. Yep, yeah. perfect. Did I get them all? Yeah. Okay. So um, we're going to need to just write that in. Sure. You, you know what we're going to do now. That's so, great. Um, and we'll send that to you. Yeah, you I, I very much appreciate it. Thank you all. OK. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Lewis. So was there a motion to approve the We're about to do that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so I need a motion to approve it with those conditions. So okay. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So, um, is it, I'm sorry, is it, is it going to get inspected after, after it's completed? No, John did not. No, I mean, we want somebody there for the lifts. That would be about the only thing it is. I, I, I'm less concerned about the lifts. I just think it'd be prudent to have somebody <coughs> run by it after the, after the project. We can check it out. Right. Yeah, the, the, somebody from the road crew could would, check would, it out after. Do afterwards. you want to check? That day, if he does it on a Sunday, or can they do it Monday morning? Yeah, Monday. Would, yeah. Yeah. Uh, would it be okay, like through a yeah. month later, if it starts yeah. shutting right. shut down? You, whatever you think. Yeah. Okay. Good. Like the, the big concern is it's it's going to be on him if he doesn't do no, it. No, right. I know, but I, I think just for the, just for the sake of making sure that it gets put back in a reasonable fashion and afterwards, you know, whatever the next working day is for uh, for the road crew, if somebody okay. can go by just to make sure that site conditions are are good and then obviously we're going to hear about it if it's <laughs> if it's not a month down the road somebody will say something and so but I, I agree i think it'd be probably excessive to make somebody check the list well, that's what I'm about so, recording this pipe uh, the location of the pipe for the future mm -hmm. um if we go to you know we need some type of record where it's at sure in case we go to dig sometime and well you know. that will be in the town records because we've got a map here okay um i don't know how you how that gets filed does anybody they have some there's something uh, they have a gps monitor thing of all the underground facilities the storm sewers and stuff here but i think toby knows about it but we don't okay. have seen it i have a copy oh okay. I mean, Oh, no. You have a copy yeah. of, of what, Nick? Um, culvert, culverts and inventory of uh, culverts. The last time they were serviced and replaced, I'll send it to uh, So who keeps that updated? Yeah. I don't think sewer lines are not. where it crosses the street. I was thinking that would be something. Yeah, that's, a, that's the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission does those, I think, but uh, not this. But we need a record somewhere. Does I guess, it get reported to DigSafe? 
Mm -hmm. Well, he'll be calling to say him, but they'll. I mean, they you just, call them before, but yeah. do you tell them when new things get put in? No, no, mm -hmm. they no. don't care about that. Huh. Um, well, let's question for Tegan, maybe. So, one of the conditions is could be that you would require him to have it recorded in the land records. I mean, is that what you're looking for? You're looking for we're, road records. We're looking just so. 20 years from now, so he's out there and we don't want to accidentally hit his plate. That's what we want. You know what I mean? Just yeah, so, so recording on the land records won't have to own house because you right. might know yeah, probably not. Right. Well, no, where do you look be... now, John, when you do something like that and you're worried about it? We as Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, sir, all the culprits I have a feeling we didn't keep track of it then. No. <laughs> Maybe that's something for the future. Maybe we ought to have a file mm -hmm. as Does we the put these things permit in. Permit get closed. I'm trying to read through the permit language. Does it get closed? <clears throat> what do you mean, Jordan? Does it have like a beginning and an end? Like complete? Yeah, a time period? Like a com oh. Well, a completion, uh, like a notice of completion of sorts. Um, no, not with these. These usually they're just authorized to put a fence or something in the right of way, so we don't know, have a process for that. This is, I, I bet this, this is a question I bet Toby could answer. Okay, let's make a note to uh, do that. So I'm gonna put this aside and we'll fill this in and I guess we, <clears throat> we'd better do the vote on it. Would, would you like me to reach out to Toby? Um, I think probably we should. Do you want me to, I can email him tonight when I get home and copy you? Yeah, that would help. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Um, so we all need to sign this, but I haven't put the language in yet. So we'll, I think we'll just put this one on to the, off to the next meeting. I'll write the language in and bring it to you. Mm -hmm. And we can sign it at the next meeting. And that should be plenty of time for you, Louis. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, so under public comment, I was asked to come speak about the fire department. Is that appropriate now? Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were. <coughs> Although I should have guessed. Um, we were going to talk about the fire department toward the end, but if you uh, want to make a public comment, I don't I'd want to. Rather not wait. If you could I, that's yeah. what I was going to say. So okay. why don't you go so, ahead now? So I'm John Winston. I've uh, lived on Lightning Ridge for 53 years, um, I, and I know, but I have no idea who the rest of you are. Although I probably voted for all of you, but <laughs> I don't have names and faces. Oh, why don't we say our names? Jamie Morgan, you spoke on the phone. Yeah. Yep. Gabrielle Molina. And Tula, and you we spoke. spoke on the phone. Yes, we did. Okay. And Jordan Keyes. Great. Okay. Good to meet. Why are we being filmed? All the, the all the select board meetings are uh, filmed and put on public access oh. viewing. Okay. That's it? I'll be careful what I say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, well, I'm here to talk about the fire department. Um, some of you know I have a long history with the fire department, about a 45-year member in the fire department, one of its past chiefs. Um, Callis was very well represented between Lester Toby, Mike Guerin, and myself for almost 20 years of chiefdom of Callis residents. And we've had a roster made up of Callis and East Montpelier people forever, even from 1964 on when the department was first started. I think what precipitated the conversation for me is this crap in the Times Argus. Um, and Ann and I spoke on the phone, and unfortunate set of circumstances that the dates were mixed up and all that, but I don't think that's what the issue is with this article. I think this article speaks more towards the issue of some people on the other select board East Montpelier trying to bully, if you will, trying to take charge of the fire department and as they put it, no longer be in bed with the Callis select board. And that's very unfortunate that that was there and it was put out that way in the Times Argus. Um, there's a bunch of things that was said in there that are not true. Um, there was not a coup to take over the chiefdom. It was a duly warned election where we appointed a new chief that was voted on by the membership, not appointed, as this article says, by a select few people that might have been on the board. 
And um, it's always been done that way. There's a sign-up sheet. It's up right now because we have elections coming up in May. If you want to run for chief or you want to run for this or that, you put your name up. And uh, the whole department who attends that meeting votes. And that's the way it's always been. It wasn't the coup that took over when I stepped down from being chief. I was done being chief and someone else became chief. And it's always been that way. It's been relatively amicable. I think, unfortunately, there's some bad feelings with the previous chief and the current interim chief, or who had been elected as chief, that was Larry Brown, who, as the article says, abruptly resigned, which was unfortunate, but that was out of the fire department's control. So at that point, Albert Petrella, who was a deputy, stepped up and said, fine, I'll do it, you know, and no commitment that he's even willing to continue with it or not. Um, it's unfortunate. I think that there's a lot of ill feelings in the town for people who have read this. I don't know if you've heard from constituents or not, but this, I think, is very inappropriate and a very inappropriate way for another select board to air their feelings and express their thoughts about how we do business. East Montpelier is no different than any other ambulance service in the state or in the nation. We just can't get people anymore. So when the article talks about inability to staff two shifts, we have been able to staff. Sometimes we might miss one, but that's not unique. I mean, that's the situation all around. And interestingly enough, when I was at the station, the woman who was the head of the EMS service said when the article came out, she got a call from the new head of Barrytown EMS saying, what's this all about? Because the article says, you know, go back to Barrytown. Well, what it's all about, quite frankly, is Barrytown EMS, according to their new interim director, has no interest or no ability to take over East Montpelier for ambulance service. So this was a decision that was made a long time ago to get the ambulance business. It was supported financially and with bodies by both towns. And we're in a position now where we're at a crossroads. Um, because I think the fire department is feeling kind of miffed at the response they got from the East Montpelier Select Board. And that some conversations were had that were not above board or not public conversations in public meetings that the press got a hold of. Um, and that's, that's unfortunate, especially for a fire department to be treated that way or been that information to get out in the public that way. I mean, you've all read the article. I mean, it's, I assume you've all read the article. And I brought it if you haven't. Um, so, I have one extra copy of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, Rose. <laughs> and if my printer had run out of ink, I would have printed more. Well, I think we've all read it. Yeah, I think you've all read it. So, most of what I want to express is don't give up on dealing with the East Montpelier Select Board. Don't be bullied by another Select Board. And don't try to be bought out by another Select Board because Callis is in it as much as East Montpelier is. You know, we shared the cost, a prorated portion of the cost of that new building. We've shared all of our operating expenses. We've shared all of our capital expenses. And you don't just walk away. Yeah. I, I, that's, it's unfortunate. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If you have any questions Anybody? or thoughts, you can volunteer me. fire company. We'll say it again? It's a volunteer fire it's company. It's strictly volunteer. It, it has been in the day absolutely volunteer and now it's quasi paid volunteer because we're having to pay um, the people who are running the ambulance for the shifts that they put in we no longer are able to have people like myself in the day 30 40 years ago where we used to just volunteer our time those people don't exist anymore the communities change our time has changed our families have changed we started off as a fast squad which meant that we would respond from here in our own vehicles and meet Montpelier Ambulance. And that's how it all evolved. And then it went from that to some people saying, gee, we should get our own ambulance. And that's how it was started. But it was started with both select boards and both towns approval. That's right. 
I, I wouldn't want to ask you to conjecture yeah. what the meaning of it was, but I am curious, like what would be accomplished by kicking Callus out from East Montpelier's perspective? I, I just didn't understand what he was trying to say. With this guy here? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so, so I think it's a public I, meeting, I, John. <laughs> well, what my sense is, which is what the article says, is that if Callis were out, East Montpelier would have ultimate control over who might be chief, how the department would be run, where the equity sits in the building and all the equipment, and I think it's about control. But do they think it would cost them less? Like what about the partnership? It, it, is it because they need more ambulance hours because it's two towns or are there more hours total? Like no, nobody, I don't think anybody's talking about not covering both towns because East Montpelier Ambulance also covers other surrounding towns with contracts. Um, I don't think that's the issue. I think it's more an issue of what's, what's viewed by some people as a control issue, wanting more of an equity position and not wanting to work with another select board. John, remind me, what percentage of the building do we own right now, Callis? Rose, do you know what it's one third? It's I mean, one third. It's always been about one third, two thirds. That's the way we've always yeah. divided everything. Okay. And is the, the same with the equipment, is that right? Yeah, we have one yeah. third interest in all the same equipment. Same with all the, and the, the, the trucks we bought and the ambulances mm -hmm. and the loans we take and all that. And it's governed by an interlocal agreement yes. among the three parties, exactly. the East Montpelier Fire Department and the two towns. How often do we sign that interlocal agreement? It's every two years. I think it's up this fall for a signature. I haven't seen, um, and I've requested a copy of the most recent one. Oh, I'll when, send it to you. When we initially started it, um, it was um, automatically renewed, I think, every five years. And then, no, it's it's more often now. Yeah, and then in the last couple of years. Um, but if you want to get out of it, you have to give, I think it's a six months or 12 months notice. A notice, yeah. Yeah, to the other side. Um, I'll, I'll send copies to all of you and to you, Rose. Thanks. And, and anybody else who's interested, okay, of the current agreement, which I believe is up for renewal this fall. Could very well be. Yeah. The other thing, if I could just make a quick comment, um, you know, I know that Ann Tulin um, agreed to be like the select board liaison. Um, and I just wanted to say, and you know, maybe because you're a new board, you didn't really realize it, but those joint select board meetings are supposed to be the select board with the East Montpelier select board and the East Montpelier Fire Department board of directors. It's everybody is at the table. And um, not just one person. And not just one person. And so, um, and what Callis has always done is the chair calls the meeting to order and you run it just like a select board meeting and then you're, you're done and you could make motions or whatever and be approved. East Montpelier has always not their full, most of the time their full board didn't come, but Bruce Johnson, who was the town manager for many, many years, he would always come. And then, so in this instance, the board, they met, Unfortunately, Callis didn't have representation. That was on a Thursday, and then when East Montpelier met, that article came from their regular select board meeting on Monday night, and they talked about what had transpired on Thursday. So, but with Callis, you know, our board was always there, and even the recording secretary, um, and we treated it just like a, you know, a joint select board meeting. So that was the whole intention, because you talk about you know, financials or saving for a new engine that's going to cost $400,000 or, you know, staffing and, you know, extra costs like that. So that's my yeah. fault then. I misunderstood. I thought it was fine to send a representative. Yeah. And that, okay. those are the ones that are three times a year? Three times a year. There's one in August. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Three times okay. A year. Okay. So. Well, uh, it's that's unfortunate. Oh, but yeah. we'll do well, better. One, one thing <laughs> is when we get our outlook, we can have a calendar. Um, oh, yeah. And I know there's one on the website, but I'd rather have one I can look at on my mm -hmm. computer and we can put all those future dates on there mm -hmm. and then it's not take vacations. <laughs> Do anything ever. The first Thursday, mm -hmm. um, 
Toby has all those yeah. dates, and probably you do, John. Do you know? Can you tell us when they are? No. It's a it's a Thursday it's in a August, Thursday. And, a, and I think yeah. the first Thursday in December. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I can't remember which Thursday in August. Yeah. All right. But Thank it's a ways you. off, and you know, this is all pretty recent news, and I'm not so sure that we should just sit sit on this and not do something as a response. Well, I will tell you that I picked up the phone and called Seth Gardner, and he has not returned my call and said, I think we have some things to talk about. Yeah, good. Thank um, you so that. I don't know what else. I also called Albert Petrella, and yeah, he yeah. did not return my call. I spoke to Albert today, though. He did? Okay. Yeah, and he's, he's okay. Yeah. I mean, he just wants the department to be... He just wants it to be whole again. He wants it to be whole, and he wants them to be valued and yes. respected and um, part of the process. Yeah. That's all he wants for his team. So what else would you suggest, John? Well, I'm not so sure. I mean, I know a lot of people read Front Porch Forum. Um, maybe something should be posted by the select board on Front Porch Forum saying that we're in it and we're not about to walk away from the East Montpelier Fire Department as a Cala select board or as a community. That might help. I don't know if, if you folks have been contacted by anybody, but a number of people called me up and said, what the hell's with this? I don't know that we know enough yet to put something like that together. Or it might not, especially if people aren't calling you back. <coughs> Well, are you, um, are you concerned that folks like yourself, super invested, you've spent years of your life volunteering mm -hmm. for this organization, and um, are, you, like, are you mostly concerned that folks such as yourselves know that the select board is still invested? Is that, would that be the main reason to, to do people, that? I think people who are in the know, know. I think that a lot of people not in the know just don't understand what's going on. That, that would be my concern. Um, and people in the department have said on the side, well, if this is the way it's going to be, I'm going to quit. And these are longtime valuable members. When is the next meeting of the fire department? Um, Tuesday. Next Tuesday is the business meeting. Would it help if one of us went? It's the election night. Um, I'll be glad to speak at that meeting and say that we spoke. Um, I'm not so sure that it would do much at this point. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely speak towards it at that meeting. I mean, Ann and I had a great conversation on the phone. I thought that was very helpful. I'm glad it felt supported that way. All right. Thank you. But we can't afford to lose members. No. Understood. There are not that many members anymore. Yeah. And we can't afford to lose fire protection no. and emergency services mm -hmm. and ambulance. Absolutely. <laughs> we can't. I mean, I presume the vision is not that we'd lose it, but that we would contract for it instead of being a, a part of the management of it. Exactly. Well, that's my sense of what the article speaks towards. Yeah. That you would have no say in the way it's done or controlled. Right. And we'd have to just be like a plain field or a marsh field or someone that contracts for the service. Is the same, which is our relationship with Woodbury at the moment. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, it seems, it seems to me like a, it, it's a little disappointing to see a response like that. I mean, it really was no malintent. It was a scheduling thing that we just kind of dropped the ball on and also just kind of a misinterpretation. But certainly from my perspective... And a brand new board. I mean, how much can you... How much uh, can you and, that, and that's kind of my point. It, you yeah. know, it was the first I had heard that we uh, had these regular meetings, um, aside from reading over the last year that there was an effort to kind of coordinate an attendance sure. uh, by the previous board, um, was our last meeting, I believe, um, when members of the department were like, this is, this is what these are for, and this right. is what we'd encourage participation, and we'd on the fly very much tried to be responsive to that scheduling need, um, and, and, and dropped a scheduling ball, which, uh, you know, from my perspective, doesn't, doesn't warrant a, a reaction like that, and short of... Well, uh, it, it could have just been rescheduled. And um, they could have been recognized, gee, this is a new board, they, the dates got messed up, why don't we just reschedule? Yeah. 
So I, I wonder if, a, to, your, to your point, a, a, an offer to make a statement of, uh, of commitment, um, either through a letter to the editor, or my, my concern with a front porch forum post is that that's largely just going to speak to the members of our community. Um, and it seems like this was circulated broader than that. It so um, it needs to be somewhat proportionate. And I think an opportunity for the East Montpelier Select Board to make that a joint statement. Um, it's a little disappointing that there aren't any returned phone calls. Um, so okay. Uh, Maybe something to that extent would be. Would somebody like to? Actually, John, you could write a much better letter than any of us could at this point. I didn't run for the select. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought about it, but there's too many meetings. Yeah. Uh, I'm too old for it. Not asking you to join the select board, just asking you to help us draft a, a, a letter. I will think about that. You'll think about it. <laughs> All right. Will you and Anne coordinate that? Well, that because I, you know, had originally written a mea culpa and yeah. then had. You know, probably rightly advised me to stop groveling so much. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I don't think there was any need for you to do that. You know, but um, I think certainly putting it out there, uh, the importance of this group yeah. to us and to our community, and it includes our neighbors work and volunteer there. So Absolutely. how is that going to impact them if they're kind of unceremoniously? Okay. So I think that we can do something that is positive um, and supportive of them and yeah, clear the that we want to be in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for okay. bringing, okay, for you coming. Have my number, you can call me if you want me to work on that. I do. Okay. Well, or I can, yeah, I'll get your email and then I can call you and we'll Rose bring it up. Rose has it all. Yeah. Okay. Rose Thank has you. your back, John. What? <laughs> Rose has your back. Rose always has back. <laughs> and your heart. Yeah. All right, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, really. Thank you. The only good news is nobody reads the tag magazine anymore. That's very true. And you can't read online anymore either. They cut it. And yet we still all saw it. You weren't? Did you read the article? So, you just have to keep clearing your cache and you can keep reading articles, but you have to clear out your cache or yeah, yeah, catch yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, you're up next. Hello. Uh, I think you probably all know already on Juan Nick Emlin, the genetic and director for Cal. I think you all know that there's annually the Vermont Emergency Management and FEMA require uh, each municipality to file a local emergency management plan. Uh, required to the extent that if, if the town doesn't, then they lose out on uh, match funding for uh, reimbursement in the event of uh, disaster. So it's a, it's a big money loss to not file one. So we, being a, a small group of team of the emergency management folks, uh, worked on an update for 2023, and I sent it to Anne, I think. Yes, uh, it was in everybody's Google Docs. Oops. Okay. I, um, I did make three. It's, it copies looks like this. Anyone yeah, has, you got it. had a chance to review yep. it yet? Um, so I'll give it now. Does anyone want one of these? I have it. Oh, if you have extra, I'd like. Okay. I'd yeah, like paper. Uh, I'll just okay. put them right there. And I'll see if I'm Are you going to send them to the town office? I send them. I, I like to give them to you. I can send it to you. Why don't you send that top of me? Or you can give one. <laughs> So I'm just here to walk through it to the extent you want me to, uh, but the snapshot is uh, the first page says um, who is on the, who wrote the plan, who would be involved in the emergency operations center if it's ever activated during an emergency event. And uh, based on our conversation last time I was here, um, Anne Tulan said that she, she kindly raised her hand and said that she would be a, a potential participant on the Emergency Operation Center team. So I added your name. Okay. Um, and we can talk about what that may entail or 
a little or a lot, or depending, depending on your preference there. We can talk okay. about that. Um, the, this functions of the positions of the EOC, that's just a way, those six boxes are a way of us thinking about getting organized around who is assigned to which part of the task during an emergency event when the EOC is open. Um, on page two, uh, there is, this is just, oh, let's see, here's the information on the location and the alternate location for the EOC. And number three, resources, lists, and uh, thanks to Sandra Ferber for getting most of this information to me. Uh, if we were needing to pull in resources from through the municipal contracts, which we already have, it lists the contact information for them. Mm -hmm. On page three, uh, public information and warning, that's all pretty self explanatory. Uh, on page four you, is uh, information about the shelters. We have a regional. Wait, sorry. Um, so the so is it the director of who who would do this um, action alert stuff? Uh, on which? Oh, on page three. Yeah, uh, is that, is that would be yeah, yes. page three. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one of the uh, if you look back on page one, one of the functions, uh, one of the positions <coughs> is public information officer. Um, so that person would be contacting and being in touch with those media sites. Uh, public, the public facing person in the midst of the crisis. Does that answer that your question? Yeah. Okay. But none of it has been assigned yet? Say that again? None of it has been assigned yet? Well, if you look at the bottom of page one, and this is just a rough sketch. I mean, it, um, there's nothing here is set in stone, but we have PIO is the acronym for Public Information Officer, and we have Denise and Betty listed here for that those functions, that function. Um, but it could be anyone, and that, that could shift around. Um, but this just gives us a starting place for how to think about okay. the different functions in the EOC. Did, did I answer that? Okay. I'm going fast because I'm assuming that you've already read it, um, mm -hmm. but, but stop me at any point. Uh, the information on the shelters is on page four. Uh, regional being in Barry, primary location shelter being the school, uh, Summers School, and this building being an alternate local shelter. The next page is. Uh, Can so I ask a question? Yeah. There's a generator in the school, is that right? But not yes. here. There's not here, though, is there? There is not here, but uh, we've been approved for a grant to, to get. Oh, uh, that's what that grant is for. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we're. It was, is it, well, it'll be installed this summer. Is that one of the ARPA? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yeah. ARPA matching. Right. Um, the next page is an inventory of equipment that the town has, the road, the garage, town garage, which might be enlisted during a, an emergency or a disaster event. <laughs> And uh, this format is used <coughs> by, by FEMA, and they want us to use this. Everyone in the entire country uses the same form uh, as advanced by FEMA. So I spoke with John. Hello, John. Good Hi, John. And um, I also spoke with Toby, and we think this is now up to date. Uh, and then the rest of the document in the landscape is a, a list of kind of random, I'll say, I'll call it a random list of resources, of local resources that might be called upon during an event, um, starting with the emergency management team, and the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I think that maybe still we need to, to 
double check a couple of phone numbers and a couple of old email addresses, but I think we're mostly up to date. If you see anything on this list that looks like I have obsolete information, please let me know. We'll, we'll correct it. Well, I don't recognize the phone number you've assigned to me. Oh, okay. Or me either. <laughs> so I'm oh, it's all the right same now. phone number there. What are you using, the town office uh, phone number for this? Um, that won't get you too far, probably. Oh, I didn't want to assume it was okay to put your, your home or cell phone there. But it would be enough. great if we had that. And by the way, this document does not get publicly distributed uh, because it has way too much contact information for way too many people on it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's... It's not going on the town website, but it will be available, certainly. I can send it, I, I will send it to uh, each select board member of the uh, I'll send it to the uh, to, to, see the, uh, to town officials. All right, and I will send you my phone number. <laughs> okay. So some of the, I'm seeing one name that's not a, um, the, a, a health officer alternate that is not, a Callis resident, but I guess when I say that out loud, why should that matter? Uh, so, oh, is that um, Jay Cotton? Uh, Lydia Fazy, but. Oh, did I put Lydia on it? Uh, Lydia, um, I'm not sure how to. Probably should give a different title. Um, she's a registered nurse. She does a lot of work with students at Callis Elementary and other schools. Okay. Uh, and so in, if there were an event where there were kids, say, in a shelter, mm -hmm. needing uh, attention to their medical or health needs, she would be a great resource. So mm -hmm. I might think of a different way of listing mm -hmm. her. So because, to my knowledge, the town does not have a health officer alternate. We've never appointed one. We've never had that position. Right. Actually, it happened to me once when I was select board chair, and I w it turned out I was the alternate health officer, and I literally had to close a building as the health officer because something, the, yeah, okay. the actual so, health officer had disappeared. So in all the years I've worked here, we've never had one. Yeah, so. well, that's what happens. In the absence of a health officer, it's the select board chair. Okay. <laughs> It basically gave me the authority to condemn a building. <laughs> I know that the same grant that got the generator from here is putting a generator at the community center. Yes. And I know that that isn't one of the approved shelters, but I wonder if it has a place in this section. Uh, it's just because it'll be. You uh, could put it in as a, a third. Third bench uh, backup. Yes, you could put that in there. Uh, when Red Cross came in to survey uh, this building and the school and Maple Corner Community Center, they said the first two they could be there um, and officially run a shelter, but they would not offer to do that at Maple Corner Community Center just because it's so small. Uh, and they said, "Great that you have this resource here, uh, but you would be running it independently." So it's, it's, but we can add it. Yeah, I was just curious. But it, I was going to ask too, like on our side of town, the east side of town, you know, over the Christmas when all the power had gone out, we have several community members that <clears throat> living with dementia, um, that it would have been impossible for their family to, you know, they could get them to walk like a short distance, but I thought to the rec room, which obviously very small, Two, but we do have a kitchen. Um, oh, whether well, two. As an independent, I guess it wouldn't fall under like a Red Cross, but also as a potential place for people to come and be collectively. Great. We should. Uh, I'd like to have more conversations. About yeah. That see where, 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 where? Sorry. Where was that? So in East Calais, we have the where our post office is. We have a. It's under the Rec Association, but we have a community. Room. So it's kind of like the Maple Corner Community Center, but there's a kitchen and it's not, the bathroom isn't accessible, truly. Um, sure is wheelchair, not. yes, not, not even accessible for able bodied people, but, um, <laughs> but it's a space because there's just sometimes for folks it's hard to, they don't have transportation or trying to get over to the elementary school. And sure. so I can definitely, I will add that to the list of stuff to talk to. Good. Yeah, and, and that all, of course, depends on having people know about it who are willing to volunteer in such mm -hmm. a situation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, and then there's the other part of this is the signature page, which is uh, the first page, which I'll, I'll just, I only made one copy. Um, you're checking boxes saying that yes, we provided all of the required information, and the second page um, is the signature page, so I'm going to hand that to you. I got one. Oh, you've got one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Does it have my signature on it? Already? It has your signature oh, okay. on it. So, other questions for Nick? Uh, going back to the beginning, what is the, who does this get turned into and who is the, the authorizing or who's the authority over yeah. this? Um, I send it into the Regional Planning Commission um, and I think that Keith uh, gives it a, a once over just to make, so it does not make glaring omissions. He sends it on to Vermont Emergency Management and I, I think that it is, um, uh, I don't not remember his name. Someone over there gives Rob it, Evans gives us the okay. He reads it more closely and gives it the okay, or comes back and says, "You're missing something," or "I need more clarification on this part." And is every town required to have one? Mm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And and some towns don't, and then they then they're missing out on the uh, the funding backup for uh, reimbursement in emergencies. Uh, but yeah, I think they said every town's required to have one. Uh, and then it goes on to, to FEMA. To send on to FEMA for me. And you said something about Red Cross checking on one of the facilities. What role do they play generally in this? Uh, they, they don't have any connection to this document at all. But we invited them back in October. We said we're, we're thinking about our potential resources for setting up a shelter. Uh, we do come, and they, they come routinely. The, some of the, a, a couple of volunteers come and go through a pretty formal checklist and put a lot on an Excel spreadsheet what the capacity is uh, in terms of how many people and what are the what can the facility provide. And uh, they were very excited about the elementary school. They said this is one of the best you know, places we've seen on, in the Northeast. And they, they said, this would be great as soon as you get your upstairs insulated. Um, because right now it wouldn't be usable in the winter. But this room would be. Mm -hmm. And they quantify you know, how many people could be served for evacuation, how many for a warming shelter, how many for overnight. Uh, so all of that is in the spreadsheet they gave us. And some of that's in here. But they don't have any formal relationship to the LEMP document. Okay. So, wait, the upstairs isn't insulated? No. Huh. They ran, you were, you, the project ran out of money is what I heard. Um, I, I, okay. Yeah, I, are, are you talking about the upstairs installation? Yeah. yeah. Um, There's some. They, they right have now. completed phases one and two of the town hall renovation. <clears throat> Phase three was to insulate upstairs and heat upstairs. It's very cold up there, so it can't be used during the winter. And that's phase three, which has not been addressed in a few years. Uh, okay. okay. S since we're talking about it, I happened to have a conversation today with Cliff Emmons about it. Um, and he is going to reach out to you shortly to schedule a time on a future agenda that we can meet with the friends of the town hall. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's where I was and, going. Okay. And, and mm -hmm. one of the things yeah. they want to talk about is they have a a shorter term, smaller grant, and then a longer term, bigger grant application that they're working on that would. Um, Is Cliff back that. in town? I don't believe no, so. No, he's not. No. Still no end in sight. Oh. I talked to him today, too. Further questions for Nick? Great job. Yep, In that excellent. case, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I would um, uh, take a motion to authorize, looks like me, to sign this on behalf <laughs> of the select board. This, um, the re local emergency plan required elements form. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks thank so much. Thank uh, Doesn't look like I need a date. Nick, you want this? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks. Can Thank you, you scan it and send the scan to the town office if you want me to scan and send it to you? I'll scan it. Okay.
Thank you. Um, are you here for a particular? I'm here for, for the uh, Lightning Bridge Road slash speeding. Um, ah, I suspected that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next up on the agenda is the sheriff's but uh, sheriff's um, contract. But if it's all right with you guys, we'll go to that one then next. I That's the. If you want to go with Fred, we'll let her have no problem. Um, Easy all right. I'm not sure, actually, Jordan, you're the one who talked about taking this contract and reorganizing it. Do you have some oh, thoughts? Me? No, I, I didn't necessarily want to reorganize it. I just wanted some time to redo oh, it okay. and understand it, but I, I don't have any further. I have copies for each of you if you would like to look at it. That's the sheriff's contract? This is the, yes. Okay. So this is the uh, contract as he last gave it to us, but it okay. should have been on Google Docs, so I didn't bring them for everybody. Okay. Does anybody out there want to happen to want to see one? Okay. okay. Uh, so this is not changed. Um, we need to fill in number 10 on page 2. Where is it actually? And, and discuss if anybody wants to make any changes to it. Do you need some time? Oh, I just need to find it. Yeah. And the contract originally was 4000 and their hourly wage has gone up because they no longer have... No, the contract was originally 30 something dollars per hour. They've mm -hmm. increased that to 60 and they've increased their mileage. Okay. We budgeted 4000 And is that oh. what we budgeted last year too? Uh, that I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but we can look. But um, we budgeted 4000 for the next fiscal year, so that's okay. what we have to spend. It's in the 410 so what we were thinking oh, was okay. instead of oh, saying yeah, we were yeah. in number 10, not putting in any particular numbers of hours per week, but just saying we will do a con we'll contract in the amount of up to four thousand. Okay. And then we'll just have to call them as we need them. In that case. Does anybody want to talk further about that? Oh. Do you want to find I think it's Well a I think that he had provided great information as far as oh gosh, I can't look at that right now. But um, the need for us to have which we're coming to next all the things in place on our back roads and, and be able to like articulate that we know for a fact that you know there's multiple vehicles speeding excessively on X road at these for them to be able to do effective policing. Um, because otherwise it is a waste of their resources if they're out just, you know, sitting around do 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 and not, you know, getting them or historically they've been on Long Lake Route 14 or on the county road. Mm -hmm. So, but I think are, is, is that, are you saying then you're in favor of just saying 4,000 and yeah, not a, lump sum not a specific amount per, per week? Any other discussion on that? Uh, just, just trying to think of bad things that could happen by having them for basically half the time that they were um, here previously. Um, you know, it is public safety, even if it's mostly speeding tickets and patrolling. Um, and they are first responders, so that's probably not encap encapsulated in the contract. So it's really just about... That would be part of the 4,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it wouldn't affect the, like, limiting it to 4,000 at, at twice the rate and therefore getting about half the time, would they, it wouldn't affect um, first responder stuff, presumably. That, that's right. It would be flexible. Yeah. Um, and we could ask them, as Anne said, <clears throat> based on what complaints we're getting on certain roads, could you spend a couple of hours there over the next two weeks? And then we would have maybe nothing for a while. Yeah. And yeah, there's so much presence. mixed information about the the speed the speed sign issue. Like some people say they're they're 
bad and some people say it's not worth spending money on and then you hear it's, it, it's a necessary part of a traffic study and it's necessary for the sheriffs to know when to show up. So I'm really confused about that actually. And, um, and if, we, if we're tr rather than just randomly lowering speed <laughs> limits, I'd like to, you know, have good information um, if we have speeding problems in places. So um, I don't know to the contract. I mean, I guess, yeah, that's what's in the budget. So I guess we, we stick do, with it and adjust do, <clears throat> the next budget. I don't remember from reading it. Do we know if there's a ability to increase it if we got six months in and we'd had a lot of emergency calls and used up all the budget on emergency calls i wonder if there's a the ability to um, revisit that and add to it if if you needed to I don't see why not i don't think it's specifically in here but we could add that if you like <coughs> Because it does with the higher amount, it's about 66 hours. And that's just straight $60 an hour. That's not my wage, not like that. So it really yeah, it's pretty slim for a 52 week. Program. We do say that 14, the town will contact the sheriff um, and or his designee if they wish to change, wish a change or special emphasis made to satisfy law enforcement needs. So that seems to give us the wiggle room to expand it if, if we yeah, need to. I think so, yeah. I'm sure they won't, they would accept it if we right, yeah. offered them more. Yeah. Other thoughts? So it's like 67 hours a year. Yeah, it's not very much. So that is one point a something a week. Yeah, yeah. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Because do they get paid for their travel time? I forget what he said about yes, that. Yes, they do. Uh, well, they get um, paid mileage. mileage. And they get overtime as well. <clears throat> overtime based on what? If they're here two max hours. Right. <laughs> Well, if they I, came and then there was like an emergency, like they had said, if they're here and then say two miles down the road, there's a gun incident or something and they go over there to provide support or they're the first on the scene for an accident while waiting for the state troopers or, and then that time, because I mean, it probably goes on a whole week, you know, they're going everywhere during the week and I don't know how they would. Well, but who, I, I think but it's something different. I think mm -hmm. it's that they're, the, you know, they come in from eight to five or whatever it is. And if we want them at six, we have to pay at the overtime rate. Mm -hmm. uh, or the so you don't think it's the when they go over 40 hours a week? No, I, because it says overtime and holiday oh, rate okay. will be yeah. invoiced at $90, $90 per hour. So it would that's make sense to me that that's outside mm -hmm. their regular work times. Nice, down to half an hour a week. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, what we could do, we don't have to sign this until um, the end of the fiscal year. We could think on it a little more, we can mm -hmm. look at the budget, we can discuss it with Sandra, or we could sign it and then ask for an amendment later, can whatever you would like. Reach out to them too and just make sure, like double check if we were to add to it, that would be, I just, they're all, all law enforcement are having such staffing issues, so I don't know if that would end up being a squeeze if, you know, six months down the road, we're like, we've blown for 65 hours. And you mean, ask them if we could expand. If it's like, something that we could expand or what we need to do it in advance, like if we, halfway through the year, need more assistance, do they have confidence they would be able to do that? I, we could do it that way. I mean, just to make sure before we, because, you know, if they're like, eh, then maybe we need to. Yeah, I mean, just like the way it is, 67, hours a year, it doesn't even make sense to have them once a week. No, it would not. No, no. Yeah. So we and, could- And we didn't, really for them it would be, we have police over here a lot between state troopers and Hardwick for various things, um, public safety wise. 
But yeah, for them, for now, while we're figuring out traffic and signs and the right signs and the, all those things, um, we should be using them very strategically just so that we're getting the most bang for our buck. Mm -hmm. And that would probably be a long route for Dean, our county road, where the signs are proper and to spec and, you know. So I don't know that the, the speed signs on county road are to spec to code. Mm -hmm. um, they're pretty small, right? Yeah. And that, I think that, was, a, that was a specific <laughs> example that he gave, I think, was a citation. Oh, was, was on yeah. Okay, it sounds to me like we should put this off a little bit. Maybe think a little bit more about budgets, talk to Sandra about it. Yeah, so I, I'm just kind of making a note that maybe it's worth circulating a document where folks can add questions on specific, or ask for clarification on specific clauses. Um, to clarify on the okay. overtime and just kind of get points of clarification on each of those and then okay clarify overtime did you you want i can do i can help coordinate that okay if you want. how about if we send our questions to you then is that what you mean sure yeah that would be good okay. or i'll solicit them my thinking was we should have a conversation with Sandra about this too. I think since, that makes sense. That too, seems yeah. to be the big thing. So we'll put that on her list. And meanwhile, everybody is going to send their questions as they continue to think about this to Jordan. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have you know how to contact um, Meyer, Brett Meyer? Uh, he's no. he's our guy. I can send you as a, you. You want Brett Myers? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I, I have his. Um, They're very responsive when you call them. Yeah, I, I actually I have his contact info. We got it. Okay. They came in. So you've got that, Rose. Jordan's going to collect questions and reach out to the sheriff. And, and why are you talking to Sandra about it? I'm going to talk to Sandra about um, this vis a vis the budget, whether she sees that there would be a way to get more money from the fiscal year 24 budget. So that we could expend more than four thousand on the share. Awesome. Okay. All right. Are we done with that one? Yeah. Now we'll get to traffic ordinance. <clears throat> Should I get in the hot seat? Sure. I mean, if you want. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever makes you comfortable. You're you're uh, Michael Lonyo, right? I am. Yeah. Okay. And do you know all of us? Do you know who all we are? I know Jamie. I, I talked to her a few times on the phone. I don't know who you yet. Gabrielle and Lena. Okay. And Anne. Other Anne. Yep, Anne too. Mm -hmm. Jordan Keys. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Jordan. Good to meet you. All right. Yeah, I know Rose really well. She's on my Lightning Ridge. We <laughs> call Lightning Ridge people here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wrote a little description of the changes I would suggest that, uh, not the changes, but what the issue is. And do you have? Yep, there's copies over here, and I emailed it to Mike last week. Oh, so you've seen it. If anybody else would like to see it, it's over there. Um, so where we are is um, these. there have been several changes proposed, specifically on the county road from East Montpelier to Maple Corner. So from the, the border to Maple Corner, uh, lowering the speed limit from 50 to 40. On, um, in the village of Maple Corner, reducing it from 40 to 25. On Old West Church Road, 35 to 25. And then there's a bunch more that are all 35 to 30. So the village of Maple Corner, isn't it already 25? It's 25 at the bottom of the hill. So it goes from Oh, 50 right. to 40. Um, right at the bottom of the hill. And then 40 to 25. No, it goes from 50 to 40, coming from Montpelier towards Maple Corner. It goes from 50 to 40, quite a ways back. And then it goes maybe a half a mile later, it goes down to 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I at the top of the hill where at the, the top Patterson's of the hill live. Where the Patterson's, yeah. yeah. So it's I 25. think. Okay, I misunderstood that. It was hard to read because they were using feet. Right, exactly. And, uh, so I think it's the whole 50 section goes down to 40, and the current 40 section would be an extension of the 25. Okay. I think. Yeah. That's. All right. So. Can I ask a question? Where in the village of Maple Corner is the speed limit 40? It's not. It's not. No, that was a. That's what they're saying. 
Yeah, that that's I, what I misread that. I don't see where it says it's 25. Um, but, but that's all right. You guys know what it is, so we'll, we can deal with that later. But it's to slow it down in the village anyway. And then there's a whole bunch more where there's just a five mile per hour speed limit. Now, under this, the statute, we have to do a study. And they do recommend highly against slowing the traffic down beyond what most people feel comfortable driving because then they begin to um, uh, engage in dangerous <laughs> kind of driving, like trying to pass, where they might not otherwise have tried to pass. Um, so what the, the rule is that you have to um, take account of what speed people are driving, and then you throw out the 15 fat percent fastest drivers. And the speed at which 85% of the drivers are driving, that's the speed limit that you must set, unless you can document a reason to make it slower. The, the average of the slowest 85%? No, no, the, up to the whatever. The, the top. Yeah, yeah, and, and you round it to the yeah, five right. miles, whatever the nearest five miles per hour. 5 Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Or I just might add, look at the statute too, it also says if a town sets a speed limit, any, you, know, you can't go under 25, but anything above that, 25, there's a five year statute of limitations, uh, and if you, say that the county road is going to be 25 miles an hour, and after five years, uh, it's, on, you can't, it's, not, it's undetestable. Um, yes, I know that. And that's not a bad thing, actually, because I was talking to somebody who, who uh, retired from a, a municipal position. He said, Berry City, essentially, he didn't think they did a traffic study when they, out, when they pushed the 25 out to the edge of the city. And they really contested it, and it's 25 now. It's been there over five years. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But for, for five, up to five years, you have to produce this study. And you have to have documented why you're going lower than that 85%. Um, you know, it's a school zone, or it's a village, or there's a lot of pedestrians or bicyclists. So those studies, we checked with Rick Kaheen, and they were not done. Right. Rick did not believe that. They were done. They were done. So um, we have reached out to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. They've got us on their list to do some studies. They just need us to tell them where, and they will do them this summer. Now, they probably can't do all of these, but they can do some of them. <laughs> Is there a cost associated with that? No. Nope. No. Nope. They will do it for um, the cost of our um, membership. Membership. Yeah. Thank you. And then would they come back next year and then yes. the other half of the road? Yes. So we can pick like the most yes. immediate. I know Lightning Ridge is one of them because um, of this straightaway. And there's probably a few other that just by yeah. the design of the road, they're more inclined to speeding. So, but is the, is the problem on Lightning Ridge that the speed limit is inappropriate or that people just drive too fast? So there tends to be periods like particularly folks getting to school that are just cruising. And sometimes, and I don't know because we haven't had a traffic study, because our roads are smaller and especially if someone is accelerating, they could be going pretty slow. I mean, I was coming down through North Callis Road and I was maybe 27 miles an hour and I had someone like I was going 50 miles an hour and I wasn't going that fast. So sometimes it's perception too. but. But you're saying someone freaked out at you or honked yeah, at you? Yeah, someone screaming and yelling at me to slow oh, down. Okay. Like I was like, <laughs> going 27. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll also <laughs> note that um, the recommendation is if there's a specific spot in the road where you want people to slow down, you don't change the speed limit. You put warning signs like school zone mm -hmm. or you know, like curve road. ahead. Yeah, or, where they have the curve and people keep going. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah. Does that meet, is that what you understand in terms I of the statute? I understand it, but I also know that if you can make an argument that on certain roads, like there's going to, I read somewhere there's going to be a daycare center on Lightning like, Ridge Road, it's not kind of close to where it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, a also, what? A daycare center, number uh. one. There are a lot of pedestrians. Um, it's sort of bicycles use that a lot. I mean, you can make the argument if you wanted to, to make that speed limit anything you wanted to. Uh, I, mean, I would like 25, I'd probably get it, but I, I think that uh, it's a, a road that's 
very wide because of many other roads in town, and that makes people drive faster. Uh, there's no, to use Rick's term, or keen, there's no traffic calming there at all. Um, uh, there's that speed limit, uh, oh, what do you call it, um, warning sign uh, stuck in the ground, the, uh, the base for it, and that's mm -hmm. not, and that's not there yet. I wonder if uh, that's going to show up soon. Yeah, it, well, it, that was another, because uh, originally those signs which we had received, I think the hope was that they were portable and that they could be, that you could have bases, but they could be moved around and and they're not. So they had some challenges with their height versus the top part, which is very top heavy, and they would have to basically compromise their structure to make them not fall over. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't know that they're gonna work. Yeah, we're, we're still looking into that. Mm -hmm. did, did you wanna offer some testimony or just be part of the discussion? No, I just wanna be part of the discussion. Okay. I, I, would, I would like to see the speed limit lowered. I'd like to see uh, some traffic calming there. I think the road's too wide. I'd like to see the road not widen anymore because uh, that obviously encourages people, particularly when they go down the hill. I know I talked to Tom McCarr who was up in that road. He says one time somebody was flying down through the air off the road at the corner and it was front yard. Um, they just drive too fast. I mean, it's, uh, and they see 35, and 35 may be too fast, but you know, the rule goes, they say 35, they're going to go 50. Or, you know, it's like with the interstate, when they say 65, you drive 65 in the interstate, you're going to fly down by some idiot uh, mm -hmm. who's driving, you know, 75, 80. So, um, I like to see Lightning Year get the first traffic study if we could, but I would also like the select board to consider that we should have a, a speed limit of 25 there. And 25 on all of Lightning Ridge Road? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a road that it, it's really, people would slow it down. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that you can make an argument with the statute saying there's pedestrians, there's, um, what's on, there's bicyclists, who's going to challenge it? You know, somebody with 10 points on their ticket hoping to get a higher right away or to try to challenge it? Not likely, most people aren't aware of that. <laughs> and we don't enforce the damage anyway, so it's kind of like a, mm. making people um, act in good faith with a, a little bit of fear of, of getting caught, that's all. Okay. So. Um, just to clarify, my understanding is <clears throat> the current speed limit is 25 from Route 14 to Gray Road. Correct. Correct. And then 35 to Adamia Road. Correct. And the, the proposal from the last select board was to maintain that 25 mm -hmm. and lower 30 to Adam mm -hmm. Road. That would um, be a and, sure, and, right. And we had discussed, and I think I, I think I had this discussion with one other person who was suggesting that the 25 go past Gray Road a road or two, but not necessarily all the way to Singleton. That would be Tucker I mean, Road, then. That would that be the only, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Other questions, discussion? I think we could probably ask, we could ask for all of them, but I think we need to know um, what our priorities are. Well, I think if I could register some, I guess, personal commentary, you know, I think. Um, Relative to, to you know community resources and road use, uh, it seems to me that Lightning Ridge from 14 to Tucker Road is, with the school, the, the potential for a daycare. I believe it's going to be falling right around that. I know we're looking at it. Um, seems like a good area to target one of the initial traffic studies to facilitate action um, and then the actually i think you mean from the gray road to tucker road because it's already 25 from down by the school from 14 to gray road oh okay from 14 to gray road it's 20. okay so it's that would be from gray road then back to either tucker or george road mm -hmm. um 
you know, the, the lead up to the school corridor right. and the flats. Um, right, as you kind of approach, you know, Route 14 there. Uh, that, that seems to be worth targeting and then, um, and then the, there'd be the stretch of road from Maple Corner up the hill to wherever it changes to 40 mile an hour zone. So sort of the village. Yeah, or or from the forty mile an hour zone back to east, you know, East Franklin, where it changes to forty mile an hour. So the again. entire county road to the yeah. Yeah, they, right. You yeah. have to break them into one of those chunks. I would imagine the, the twenty five would stay twenty five, so it would be the the forty and the yeah. fifty sections. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, one other note on extending it up. Uh, Lightning Ridge Road is right at George Road is the Chickering Bog Trail, which mm. is a public callous trail um, that gets a fair amount of use. And the parking for that is down George Road, just 100 feet or so. Mm. And so there is a fair amount of pedestrian traffic up George Road and crossing Lightning Ridge right at the, mm. that intersection. Well, I don't think we need to, to make those arguments yeah. yet. Right now, what we need to do is identify where we want to target our uh, studies, and then we'll talk about those resources. And I'm wondering whether we should just ask them to do the entire Lightning Road at this point. Lightning Ridge. Lightning Ridge. Um, but, uh, OK, well, we can t certainly ask them at least to do that part. Are there yeah. other, what about Old West Church Road? No, it's not even on the oh, Old West Church it, it Road. It is on the list. Um, I think it's on the list. Oh, Old West Church. Yeah, so I don't, it's a it's a pretty smooth road, is my recollection. It's fairly. It's not very narrow. I think. I mean, certainly test it, but I think that might be one of the ones that would fall under. If you make it too low, then it's going to create problems. But certainly, I think testing it, possibly 30. So shall we, how about we rank them one, two, and three? OK, it sounds like Singleton Road's got some scary parts. Jack Hill Road's got some scary okay. parts. OK, so right now we've got Lightning Ridge, or this is where we seem to be going. Lightning Ridge, the village, and County Road are numbers one. So Old West Church, you would call a sort of second. Can I just tier? ask a dumb question? <laughs> what is the what is the problem we're trying to solve here? I know I know people go too fast on Lightning Ridge. The the speed limit right now on County Road for not that large of a paved portion where people commute to work every day is fifty miles an hour, and then it goes down to forty in East Montpelier. What is the problem with it being fifty? I wasn't part of it. The, the, I've been at a couple former select board meetings where it was discussed and um, they said that they had received many comments, citizen comments, over the course of many years from people who live on the 50 mile an hour section of County Road um, requesting it be really reduced to 40. Mm -hmm. I have not had those conversations. I, I remember a number of years ago, Maureen Cassidy had a petition signed about getting the speed limit uh, dropped there. Unfortunately, no one can find that petition any longer. Go figure. Uh, I think the argument with the previous select board was that if it's posted 50, people interpret that as 60 or 65. And they're hoping if it gets dropped to 50, then people will think, I can drive 50. I mean, if it gets dropped to 40. Oh. People think they can drive 50, but I, at 50, they think they can drive 60 or 60. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm really kind of concerned about, like, kind of the anecdotal perception of people's behavior. None of us are traffic analysts. So, you know, I, I think it's really important for us to make sure that we're solving the right problem. And from, from my admittedly own anecdotal perspective, um, this seems like more of a limited resources and enforcement issue. And if we try to take action just for the sake of saying that we're taking action and it doesn't change the behavior, then we really haven't, we haven't done anything to solve the problem or help the community. So 
I, I think the best thing that we can do is is target the you know with, with County Road and Lightning Ridge, those are roads that get, I am imagine, heavy traffic, commuter traffic out of town. They're what would otherwise be considered connector roads. Um, and, and, and Warren study and uh, counsel from people who study these roads to say this is what could be effective. And I think we've had meaningful conversations about the use of re resources or the investment in resources like the uh, like the speed signs that can track um, and, and target traffic patterns so that we can take more actionable measures to, to engage the sheriff's department to step up enforcement in a in a targeted way. But you know again, this would then be my opinion, but like on, on the matter, but I think the people who are speeding at 65 miles an hour on the county road are, are doing that 65 miles an hour in East Montpelier, and they're doing that 65 miles an hour in, in the callous section of the road. And so really, it's gonna be about, you know, how do we coordinate the enforcement uh, that we want to slow people down to a speed limit that, uh, that we agree is safe. So step, step one, I think, has to be that, that study. I would just add that most, most, a majority of people follow the speed limit. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a minority who goes, who never follow the speed limit. They just forget it. They just don't, you see it, they don't care. But the majority of people see something and they generally try to stick within the bounds. You know, if you drive on Route 14, you go through the town of Woodbury, your speed limit is 35. At least I slow down. I know people live there. You get on the open road, sometimes you, know, you get a little, you know, you get a little, loose, but where people live, you want to go the speed limit. That's, their, that's my philosophy. Everybody's right. so. Okay, I think we've identified three for priority, what we could do is just give them those three and say do as many of the others as you can, unless somebody wants to identify others as being second I mean, tier. Peking, I'm probably, I probably say that wrong all the time. Um, Peking Brook? <laughs> North Callis, those are both roads that are bigger thoroughfares, I would okay. argue. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I think the ones that are, are most trafficked would probably be the, you know, Jack Hill's got some natural narrowing and parts that preclude you from really taking off. Singleton, I think, is, is the same. But I think if we hit the highest volume guys first. All right, so we'll, we'll call Pekinbrook and North Callis second tier, and then the rest of them when they can get to it. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. Um, let's see. And we need clarification on the village of Maple Corner, because I'm still not seeing anywhere in Maple Corner where it's 40 miles an hour. It's, it's yeah. 25 miles an hour from the top of the hill on County Road down. To, into the store, and then where where does it turn for you again? It, it's That's very it's a very short section. Um, I can't remember is what. No, I think it's no, it's I think no. it's right at the saddle uh, on on the way. Yeah, it it goes from twenty five to forty, just like south of Patterson's. Patterson's Cliff Emerson's driveway. Yeah, yeah, and then it goes from 40 to 50 down at the bottom of that next hollow. But the village... <clears throat> the village is not 40. Right, yeah. so, so, okay. But that is not the way the ordinance reads. Yeah. So I, I don't one. know who did that. I just don't think there's anything in, in the village that's actually anything more than 25 as it stands now, yeah. Okay. So I don't, I don't there, know where... There is actually nothing in the ordinance that says 25 miles. Of, well, no, wait a minute. Here it is. From a point 1.2 miles north of intersection with... No, that's Peak and Brook Road. Sorry, there's Which nothing in the ordinance. The county road on? But it, it, it doesn't matter. We can ask yeah. them to do the studies, and then we can um, respond accordingly. Where, have, have we had any input on where that leaves the status of the ordinance as it... I don't think we have an ordinance. It was also not posted as it's supposed to be before it was adopted. 
I mean, after it was adopted, actually. They're supposed to post it in certain ways. That wasn't done either. So, yeah, we need a plan with the, the, road, the speed signs, too. That, I feel yes, like that should be... We're going to get that's to that. later on the agenda. Oh, which we, we could okay, bump it up, but um, okay. let's finish this one for the moment. Um, would somebody like to take responsibility <clears throat> for calling Keith Cubbon at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and reporting this to him? And if no one else will, I will. I did want to give the road commissioners a chance. <laughs> <laughs> did you already... I mean, are you in communication? I have his email because... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I talked to him okay. to, to understand all this, yeah. Okay, I'll do it. So let me make a note. All right, I think that one's done. Um, uh, just a note, I appreciate this. these memos. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. because um, it's just a really good way to prep for the meeting. For um, me, friend, right. probably harder for you, but <laughs> no, actually, I I always say my pencil thinks better than my brain. I, I just it helps me to write things. Yeah, I appreciate it. I just um, have a comment. So these traffic studies won't happen till after mud season, right? I would think that's right. So I don't I think know. it's in this summer. But that's what he said. It would be summertime. Yeah. Uh, are you concerned about that? Um, I, oh, because people slow down during well, wet season. No, no <laughs> offense, but here's my road beef. I think some of the roads are horrible. Yeah. Po it's not really mud. It's just potholes and rain and potholes and rain. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Well, yeah. one thing you guys should know, I asked Tyler how much road one grader can do in a day. And he said three miles. Actually, John, you're, you can speak to that. Which, and we have two graders. So we can only grade six miles a day. Now you do the math. We were questioned about Friday. If we had an opportunity, we could have gone out and graded Friday, and people were wondering why we weren't. But then they were calling for an inch of rain on Sunday, mm -hmm. starting Saturday night. And anything we would have graded then and been yeah. back in mud. Yeah, and we've got what, 81 miles of, yeah. of pa unpaved road in Callis. So isn't it the highest per capita? Roads Probably. of any town in Vermont. I wouldn't be surprised. Do you know that? Yeah, have you guys ever heard that? Or highest percentage of the roads that are dirt. Mm -hmm. No, but the most amount of miles, yeah, I think, miles per miles. person. 79. Okay. And the last two weeks, we've been concentrating on mud holes that yeah. people can't get through. Or we don't have time to address other issues. Yeah. Well, the, the, the Kent Hill heave there is way better. <laughs> it was pretty... Yeah. Uh, that was a very good truck. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, do we have... What, what time is it? Okay, we've got a little time. I'm wondering if we can quickly get this livestock ordinance done. My concern is that um, we may need this soon. What uh, timeline are we on, Jordan and Ann, with when we have to have something happen, um, when something will happen? In theory, mm -hmm. at the moment, the date for completion mm -hmm. um, is June 1st. That's what I thought, okay. Um, there was a motion to the court to change the conditions, and our side responded, and there hasn't been any action from the court since then. Okay. I um, mean, there is requests from the owner to kind of change everything around, but we have asked to maintain our current status, but they have not filed a counter motion or anything to this okay. date to change further. Any questions for Anne about where we are with that? Okay. So um, I thought we ought to get going on this because it takes 60 days for it to become um, legal. Did you all get a chance to look at it? Is this something we could do pretty quickly? What any, um, I think, Barbara, did you put some copies of it yes. over there? If anybody would like to see it, um, this is a draft of a few changes to the Livestock Running at Large in Callis ordinance. I had a question based on the memo. Uh -huh. So you said the town found the animals had not received proper veterinary care and provided this care during their impoundment. 
the judge ruled that the town did not have the right to recoup these costs. Um, does that include the recouping the costs of impoundment, or is that just for veterinary just care? Just veterinary care. Okay. I'm sorry, that wasn't clear. Yeah. And I'm guessing that the reason is the uh, ordinance reads that the purpose of this is to protect the health and welfare of the citizens of Callis. So that's why I added language in there that we're also concerned about the animals themselves. What is our, so our municipal charter, does it have kind of boilerplate language about protecting the health and welfare of the citizens of Callis? I don't know. Because, um, because that, I mean, I, I know it's not much of a charter, but if it does, like, I wonder if the judge could look at the charter and his, their deliberations. It, you mean change the judge's opinion that we should? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we could appeal that. I guess not, but I just, yeah. I mean, I just, it, it seems, yeah, it just seems a little um, weird that the town, uh, upon impounding the animals, would not then have the authority to pay for their to get them veterinary care. Yeah, it, and the judge does not explain why he found that. He just says they don't have the authority. We don't have the authority under our ordinance to do it. Under our ordinance. That's what he said. So yeah. an ordinance trumps a charter? I'm sorry, I don't, I'm don't. i not familiar enough with the charter. Okay. I think, the, if I, may, the, I think the reason that we got a town charter was so that we could hire a treasurer that was not a resident of town. It's a very small blurb. That's why we got a town charter, so we could hand, hire Sandra, who lives in Berlin. That's why we got a town charter. But it doesn't, I, I, like you said, I haven't looked. I was on the slip board when we did it. Mm -hmm. but, is, it is real quick. Website? Are you saying that's the only thing in the town charter? That's the only thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's from 1781. I think it's under ordinances. No, <laughs> no, no, I'm pretty sure we know what I mean. It, it also oh. changes our, our authority, I think, to do other things. Like by having one by default, we get to do other things, I believe. But, yeah. well, that's Sorry, good. I didn't hear yeah. your question. Does every town have a charter? No, I'm, I was asking Rose for clarification that oh. the, 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 being able to appoint a treasurer who's not a resident is that the only thing in our town charter? The charter is four pages long. Um, it seems like it's got a bunch of other stuff mm -hmm. in there that but may have been the intent. The authority to adopt ordinances is under, I believe, under nuisance law. And so we have to follow that law in terms of what authority, what we're able to do. So, you've all had a chance to look at it. Do you want me to walk you through it, or would you like to just comment on it? I would like you to walk us through it. Okay. Yeah, I do appreciate you adding, yes. Okay. Many of the things that could. So under purpose and authority, a added language that says that, um, that we're also concerned about the health and welfare of the livestock because when they're not properly cared for, they're more likely to um, go out and cause problems. Um, and so therefore, we want to ensure that the livestock, um, oh, and I added also that when they are repeatedly found to be running at large, um, that we need to be able to provide for the welfare of livestock during impoundment, when we impound them. I said that badly, but I think you got what I'm talking about. Uh, therefore, under impoundment expenses, we, um, I added that we have the right to um, be reimbursed for veterinary expenses deemed necessary to the health of the livestock by a veterinarian licensed to practice in Vermont hoping that the judge would um, accept that mm -hmm. as and, valid. And it looks like in our current court order, they are expected to cover for the impoundment. Yes, yeah, yeah, but not for the veterinary expenses. No, veterinary too. Oh, you mean in the one you asked for? Well, it looks like in the one that we have now that the judge did rule that while they are in our custody, 
No, I that think the know. judge, that, well, that was not my reading of it. Um, I'd have to go back and look. Can what do you mean the one we have now? What are you looking at, Anne? So back in the 19th of December, the town may require the defendant to reverse for boarding, feed, and veterinary costs that the town has incurred and will in continue to incur until the defendant completes the required remedial action as a condition of getting our horses back. They may not, however, require the defendant to also pay for the town's horse-related constable services. Under the ordinances, the town is entitled to reimbursement of its impoundment expenses only. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So That's part of confusing. holding the horses would also include because they didn't have shots or I mean they needed that a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. But I do think it needs to be clarified in our ordinance. Ordinance. Yeah. yeah. So here we go. The town may not require the defendant to take any particular action with respect to veterinary care for her horses before uh, allowing her to get her horses back. Veterinary care, though very important, is beyond the scope of the ordinance. Yeah. Well, that's saying so that that's we can't require company. her to, to get them veterinary care. It doesn't say we can't be reimbursed for veterinary care. Oh, okay. But then is that referencing like when we would have them and then we gave them back. I, I believe that, that one of the conditions, one of the initial conditions uh, for uh, the stallion was to consider uh, that was a castration. Yeah. Um, and that was a bit of a, a gray area because there was kind of a, a well-being consideration, but then there was also a behavioral consideration in that recommendation. And so um, my read of that particular judgment was that we, we, can't, we can't require a, a particular action being taken or decision to be made um, like that as, as a condition of uh, the remedial actions. But, but the general veterinary care associated with caring for their well-being um, or bringing them into a stable state of health during our care um, would be an expense that could be And the recouped. judge did, did authorize that? I, I'm, I'm, maybe I misunderstood so this last then. Year, December, but this is the last paragraph of the December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so know. it is, but I think Jordan is correct in that, you know, asking specific things like we need you to castrate your horse so he's not aggressive, mm -hmm. you can't okay. to get it back because then yeah. you're permanently Understood. altering her animal okay. as a condition of, yeah. So. All right. Um, let's see here. Then, uh, under repeated violation of the ordinance, um, we add, I add language that says, uh, we have the authority to temporarily or permanently remove the owner's right to maintain livestock in the town. The judge had said we did not have the authority to do that mm -hmm. under the current ordinance. Um, and we can also impose a requirement that the owner put or instead impose a requirement that the owner puts funds in an amount um, that we would determine in escrow against further costs that could be incurred from a repeated violation. Before, before, before they get the animals horses. back? Yeah, um, yes. Following impoundment of livestock. It doesn't say that. That would be a good thing to add. And, oh, and prior to release to the owner, I'm sorry I did add it, following imp impoundment of the livestock due to repeated violations and prior to release to the owner, we can ask for those things. Okay. And uh, also um, added that we can recoup constable services. That's up in D, 4D, prior to the return of the animals, which the judge said that we could not ask for under our ordinance. So, would you guys like more time with this, or is this something we could move forward with today? What do you guys think? Um, I'm assuming that if the horses are, say, in another town, it would vary. 
and they wander back into Callis. At that point, we would not have any, I'm assuming, a jurisdiction, if you will, to have any, our ordinance wouldn't necessarily, would it fall back on Woodbury? As an ordinance, they need to deal with. Even if they wander into Callis? Well, that's what I'm asking. Oh, I would assume that once they enter our town, we can do, we can, um, deal with them, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question, but I mean, as far as having a town ordinance, I mean, I'm just like, does anything, you, you guys being the designees that are, you know, interacting with this situation, do you, do you need more time with this ordinance? It's very dense and very complicated. <laughs> um, I think that, and you have added the major things that were problematic with the original um, ordinance and how it impacted the court case and how that kind of got prolonged because then we had to go back and do a legal action. Um, could we approve it next week? Of course. Just so I can have enough time to, because I yeah. feel like a lot of Absolutely. our stuff kind of all comes together right close to when we get together and it's... You're not, you're not scheduled to meet next week. Right. Next right. week. Yay. Oh my god. A vacation. <laughs> that was school meeting. Like, really cool. uh, we can put it off to uh, May 8th. So Absolutely. does that mean we're returning to every other week? We yeah. are. All right. Okay. Because yeah, it's the issue is we need 60 days for it to come in to be. Okay. After so we, we adopt it, that. it has to be posted right. um, and give people a chance to. Um, okay. You know, have we run it by our people, like legal wise? Well, so I, I mean, I think there's a question on whether or not the vast majority of the remedial actions were were upheld by the court, presuming there's no further commentary um, from. So. I thought you said that hadn't been done yet. Yep. So the. We had responded back and the judge has not ruled. So okay. her side had requested that we modify oh, or right. change and then oh. we had said we did this for these very so detailed reasons. For reason. now, the, the remedial Status quo. They're still required. I understand. By from, that date. From counsel is that, um, that in the last decision, it, it predominantly upheld the remedial actions that, uh, that the town had. Uh, proposed with the exception of the ones that we've been talking about and are considering amending the ordinance um, for, but the there are substantial remedial actions that that would still need to be satisfied by June June first. So, you know, I, I think there's there's time to re revise this uh, because I, I don't think there's going to be. likely an immediate need to, to, okay. to, to take additional action relative to this particular issue. Um, well, and I would just want to make sure that we really consider all of that, like, you got all of the important stuff, but it's always this thing that I know, I just want to make sure that we really, every conceivable possibility, because it would yeah, happen well, and it will. <laughs> that, that'll be like it's not in the ordinance. That's a great point, and I and I think that when I when I read through this even before the, this draft, one of the things that I noted was how how we just define livestock, and it's just very specific to a list of animals. Um, right. There are animals outside of that that would likely be considered um, livestock or fall into the same category. Uh, so I, I think it'd be worth just taking the opportunity if we're going to make some modifications sure. relative to that feedback, maybe do some future thinking about, yeah, you know, what, what the, what other limitations to Anne's point okay. uh, might be. Can we put it on the agenda then for May? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So y'all got homework.
Okay, yeah. may I ask a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unrelated to this ordinance. Um, worst case scenario, the horses are returned, they go to Woodbury or someplace, and they do wander back into Gallus. Do we have somebody identified to round them up and collect them? Nope. You should be thinking about that. Oh, no, no that's that. on a list. Yeah, that's... Okay. Horse wrangling, and I, I know someone who had before, and they were leery because they themselves own horses, and the horses have... Is it Cynthia? Communicable. No. no. Um, but now that the horses are all caught up and vaccinated uh -huh. and... You know, not going to transmit a bunch of stuff to other people's mm -hmm. horses. Yeah, but that is, I mean, all of the, I mean, that's why I want to make sure that we have time to kind of, because all of the possible scenarios that might come to be need to be thoroughly planned for because several things could happen. Well, so. do we have a constable, for example? No. Mm -hmm. This, what, is a, this is a major problem. We don't have a constable or an animal control officer. Who's the last constable we had? Wilson Hughes. And how long ago was that? Uh, was that the last constable we had was Travis Shores. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. We had an interim guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was the constable. He wasn't inter interim. He yeah. just didn't last long. He just, yeah. <laughs> and when did he leave? Couple years ago? Oh no, last year. Last year. He was only like three or four months. What do we pay the constable? I believe it's a thousand dollar stipend, but I I would have to double check that. It's a stipend. Oh, oh wait a minute, I think I have a record. Okay. I, I was I wondering if we could do something like um, get some help from Woodbury. Do they have an animal control officer? I suspect they do. We might be able to, you know, hire that person to do some on a case by case basis until we can get our own. This year it's in the budget for two thousand and for fiscal year twenty four it's twenty four hundred. What it, what's the job description of a constable? Where would I find that? So uh, I, I I I can send that to you. Uh, so I could or I can read it to you on I can give you this copy. So the animal control officer is actually a volunteer position. The constable is a thousand dollar a year stipend. Yes, and the animal control is that's something you might want to consider because it is a very time intensive job. Well, Thank you. Sometimes and Wilson did it. Well, I think Wilson yeah. is busy all the time. Well, there's between a lot dogs, of dogs and pigs yeah. and horses, yeah. of course, and other, you know. And I don't even think he even charged for mileage. I think he was all out of pocket when he did it. Yeah. Um, yeah, Barbara's um, getting ready to put something in front porch for him to hopefully find someone. But meanwhile, I wonder if we could explore just um, asking maybe East Montpelier and other people around, like Woodbury, if we their constable that. would be willing if we paid them, I don't know, an hourly rate or something to, to work for us. Okay, I can, I'll reach out. Okay, I'll reach out to East Montpelier and Woodbury, and I mean, I can check Marshfield, Plainfield. I suppose, yeah. Sure, okay, all right, um, I'll do that. Just to see what we can find. Okay. Uh, I'd have to, I just gave it to, I just gave it to, um, Gabrielle, hmm. look on there for animal control officer and constable, does it say if town residency is required? Uh, no for animal control officer first or second, and no for constable first okay, or perfect. second. Thank you. Okay, and uh, huh, eight o'clock, and um, let's get to reports. Shall we start with the Curtis Pond Dam? <sighs> Again, we've got some more documents, um, particularly. Did you guys all, was the engagement letter on the Google Docs? Have you guys seen that? I think so. No, okay. That so is the engagement letter. The, um, Tom Maloney sent an engagement letter. Did we make copies of this one, Barbara? Uh, I, I think, think it was two things. His thing was on there. Copies of that. I think it was on there. Um, yeah, oh, you know what it is, I, and I sent it to you all um, via email yeah. anyway. So he had sent an engagement letter. He and I had a conversation. Um, I asked him some questions that led him to make a few changes. 
and you've all seen it. If we wish to engage him, he'd like us to sign this. So, what is your pleasure? Oh, except that I would suggest that on page three, Yeah. There's a lot of documents. Okay. Yeah, on page three, the third paragraph down, where it says payment of all fees, etc., that we say the firm reserves the right A to charge, a, I'm sorry, accordingly with this in mind, interest at the rate of 1% per, mo per month will be charged on any statement. And then I would add the words due but not paid. Rose, I'll show you this so okay, you thanks. can get that. Um, after 30 days of issuance. And the reason is, I think this is just boilerplate, what they do with most contracts, where they bill people uh, every month for whatever hours they've spent. But he's actually proposing a different system in which he will bill us that way for certain things, like if we use him for the RFP. But in terms of if he bills us for the, um, I'm, he intends that we will pay him for the bond-related fees at the end. He'll send us one big bill, but he will send us statements to show us where he is. And I just wanted to make it clear that we're not paying, we're not gonna be charged 1% interest on those, mm -hmm. only on the ones that are due, but not paid after mm -hmm. 30 days. Okay, other than that, um, I thought it was fine, but what about you guys? Any discussion at all? Um, I mean, I saw some of the lists that, you know, kind of the bullet points of, you know, that were part of the back and forth. Um, so I guess I'm not clear on what parts Sandra can do and will do versus what our bond attorney will do? My understanding is that Sandra will do all the application, fill out all the application forms, um, and, which is pretty much everything. It, the only thing that we need from him really <clears throat> is this opinion letter, that everything has been done correctly. And what he's offering is that he will review what Sandra does. He'll, she will do it, but he'll just check it out and make sure all the boxes have been checked. checked. Mm -hmm. And so the bulk of what he will be doing are these transactional documents with um, involved landowners, property owners, Washington Electric for the substation, and then um, like the other kinds of ownership and liability documents, mm -hmm. and um, and he actually did tell us that that's not really going to be him. That's going to be people from his firm. Correct. So, but we do need a bond attorney. Mm -hmm. Can't get this bond without a bond attorney, right? It has to be one of the six or seven that are certified to, mm -hmm. uh, with, with the bond bank, and they have to do the opinion letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, have, you, have you had a chance to review it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it all looked good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. We wouldn't be meeting again for two weeks if we don't, unless we have a special meeting to approve this. So we wouldn't be able, there were a lot of things we wouldn't be able to start right. if we That's didn't approve That's right. If, we, if, if it. He's expecting me to call him tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. or you guys can do it if you want, mm -hmm. um, and tell him that it's signed, and then he will immediately get to work on the RFP, mm -hmm. or get that going in his firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, would you um, like to, Jordan? My concern is that this uh, 
So in this engagement, uh, it, it's it's laying out kind of the deliberal deliverables that need to be defined, or at least the commitment to defining the deliverables. Um, and it is you know comprehensive to the extent that so far this is the list of all of the uh, known things that we need to get through um, per the Curtis Bond. Curtis Pond bonding and construction, um, but there doesn't seem to be anything about representation should the town fall into related legal issues and need representation through that. Um, so I guess my concern is the town's um, legal representation, what the status of the town's legal representation will be. Like with a tort or something? Yeah, or if something goes <clears throat> south with the dam and we end up in a lawsuit from a property owner who is then suing the town relative <clears throat> to, you know, catastrophic failure, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and now we are working with a uh, firm that is, is going to take us through the process as we kind of see fit, but if we get into a lawsuit like that, are they also going to be willing to represent us through one of those situations? Because my guess is uh, any other firms that the town has currently engaged for other topics may, may not want to represent us on that particular matter. Right. Hmm. hmm. Why not? Because we fired them? Uh, <laughs> we're not, but we're not going to fire them. We're just uh, saying we want to go with a different bond attorney. Right. Mm -hmm. so, and it wouldn't be the, that, that bond attorney that would defend us, defend us in the case of a... In neither case would it be the bond attorney. That, right. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah. if we went back with the other firm, it would probably be Joe. He seems to do the litigation. Mm -hmm. I don't know who does it in Thomas's uh, firm. Mm -hmm. but, right. I, I assume Joe and his firm would continue to represent us in those types of legal matters if they came up. Is that answer not satisfactory to you? I think that's... That's assuming a lot. <laughs> but... Um, so you would feel better if there was a clause in here saying that they would um, commit to representing us if there was... Were other legal issues surrounding the dam? I'm not exactly sure how you would lay that out. Is their law office similar to our other attorneys where they have some people who do yeah. bonds and some people yeah. who do litigation? It's like a comprehensive municipal That's right. Yeah. That's okay. right. Or at least run it by yeah. the and other I'm, team to make sure that they would be. I'm assuming that if it happened, Either one of them would do it. Right. You know, they've both said that's fine if you don't want or us to be. I'm sorry. Um, Bob Fletcher said if you don't want me to be your bond attorney, that's fine. They've been pretty clear that they'll represent us on other things. Okay. Uh, there, there is a statement after completion of the matter. Uh, changes may occur and pertinent laws and regulations that will have an impact on the future rights and liabilities unless the town engages the firm uh, after completion of the matter mm -hmm. to provide advice on issues arising from the matter. Uh, we will have no obligation to provide any ad ad advice to the town with respect to future legal developments. Yeah, that's their boilerplate. Yeah. Would you like to go ahead and sign this? Um, yeah, I mean, we could ask you to just, I guess, confirm with the other, with our callous law firm that 
they would um, work with the town from matters resulting from the matter <laughs> to put in lawyer talk. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's not part of this agreement to have a bond attorney. And if he says no? If, uh, what's his name? Joe? No. Joe, if Joe says no, then we should probably figure out who it would be. I find it hard to believe that any large firm wouldn't just say Well, that's sure. why, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I including yeah. both of these and probably plenty of others. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so um, are we ready? Like, I would make a motion. Why don't you make a motion and we'll see if there's any discussion. Okay. I move that we sign this contract for... Actually, authorize me to sign it. He's just put one. I move that we authorize Ann Winchester to sign this contract with... Tom Maloney. Is it a letter of engagement? Is letter yes. of engagement. It is a letter of en for engagement. bond counsel for the Curtis Pond Dam matter. Do we have a second? Jamie can't. Jamie's recusing herself. <laughs> Abstaining. Uh, second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to authorize me to sign it, and I would add, and with the change, do but, in that paragraph. Do but. <laughs> <laughs> Which I am about, I'm going to give to Rose. Um, is there any further discussion? Can I just ask a question? Certainly. Um, when he was here, he was very clear that he represented the Callus Pond Association, and so, from your talking and your negotiating with him, he's fully on board with being your legal counsel for this bond counsel. And is he still part? Or no. He's not yes. they, and they are released. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah, the CPA has released him, and there was an email from Mark to him explaining that and authorizing it, and a request that the rest of the executive board approve that decision and that happened. They've consciously uncoupled? Yes. The, um, the executive oh, board of, of the, the Curtis of the Bond, Bond Association. Association. Okay, so you've relinquished him. Yeah. You freed him. Yes. So now he's, he, got he was free for five minutes and now <laughs> it, it, it says in the, in the engagement letter. Ew, I don't have I know, to that. It just, so I'm just but curious. it does say that the CPA <laughs> has yeah. uh, agreed to waive its conflict and we will resign from representing the CPA. Okay. Um, by execution of this letter. Okay, very nice. Okay. Thank you. All right, is there any further discussion on this contract, on this motion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And did you say aye? I did say aye. Okay, so it's for nothing <laughs> with Jamie recusing. Abstaining. Abstaining, pardon me. Um, Rose, I'm going to need this back, but I'm going to hand you page three for now. Okay. So that you can see this blue button. Thank you. All right. We, we should probably have that email string go into the permanent Curtis Pond file. Is it, do, do we have such a thing at the I office? Have we, we don't because the previous select board never shared anything with us. So we have hardly anything other than what you guys have given us. But, but we're starting new files. We started the new horse file <laughs> because now we have some documents. We can also create a dedicated drive folder. Yeah, I'd like. I think. I mean, I think it'd be good for the town office to yeah. be the keeper of the key. Would 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 you be willing to help reconstruct key documents and yeah. pass them to Barbara? Yeah. 
Um, this is uh, copies of the rewritten MOU. You've also all seen those. Does anybody want hard copy to work with as copy. we do this no, part? Okay. Sure. Thank you. Anybody out there want to see this? This is a, uh, an MOU between the Curtis Pond Association and us in terms of how we will work together um, as so we do this project. Do we know we need to include this in, a, in the minutes? Well, or, so or just put the one... I should put the, um, the one the, line. Yeah, that we just added do but um, to that sentence. Oh, does that make sense? Yes. I think Maybe it makes I'll sense take that. Reference the, you can reference the document and then just do like a pair, note the paragraph. Yeah, page three, paragraph three. All right, um, so this is the MOU that was drawn up by um, I'm not sure whether it was Bob or Joe, um, which I have rewritten. Have you had a chance to look at that? This we do not need to sign tonight, and I'm kind of thinking, given the hour, you might like to have some more time with it. But essentially, I removed. Well, I think I wrote a little memo about it, so telling you. Is this on the agenda? Is this? I'm it's a part of the Curtis Pond okay. discussion. Okay. Um, there were, there were some references to they would uh, help us create a uh, special assessment district. And I think that one was discussed years ago and never, we never decided to do that. So I took that out. Um, and then there was reference to how they were going to go around and get signatures from people that would uh, hold us uh, harmless if the, the dam broke. And I took that out. Mm -hmm. Um, I think what I want to be sure of is that there's some kind of really good communication mechanism, and I'd love to not put it on the select board to, for example, have regular updates in front porch forum or something like that of, of work progress. And I don't know if it's appropriate to assign that to the Curtis Pond Association or not, but, um, you know, especially around approaching construction, but, you know, maybe as they're getting the documents from um, the homeowners to have an update then, and then closer to construction, some, some public facing documents um, that maybe um, they could help draft just so we're not also writing those kind of regular updates. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know, I just, I, just trying to think ahead to what kind of communication will be helpful for managing expectations and um, and not surprising people as we come upon this work. I um, I think that we we have a I'm working on scheduling the meeting, but I think the plan is to launch sometime this spring, a summer fundraising campaign focused around reduce the bond um, type language. Um, and I think as part of that, we'll see another big push of communication on the issue throughout the summer and fall. And we'll know the timeline by then. Kind of, sort of. Right, and as part of that campaign, what we've done in the past is sort of putting out updates, um, sort of in the language of fundraising. Like, we hit this exciting milestone, here's where we are with fundraising, here's where we are with the project. Um, uh, yeah, is that what you're suggesting? That, you know, every couple of weeks, something about, well, here's where we are, they've they built the coffer dam. Uh, you know. Great. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I would expect to see quite what, you know, we've been in this sort of limbo stage for a while. I would expect as soon as the permits are issued and we have a better idea of time frames, there to be a large amount of communication from this. Okay. Day. Yeah. When are the when do you anticipate permits coming back? Is that a total last, unknown? Last December. Last <laughs> December. Of we, no. Twenty twenty two. Okay. Right. That 
the permits, the main DEC permit application was submitted, I believe, in August, um, and it was expected to take four to five months. Okay. Um, and the other permits, there were five other permits that went in later because the DEC permit determined which other permits we needed. So, so they got back to you at out, some point. Right, we've been working closely with them. The engineers are working closely with them. Who's the person at DEC that you work the most with? Uh, we, we can come back to yeah, that. I, yeah, if I heard his name, I'd know it. Okay. Um, yeah, I, they keep saying they're coming, they're almost there, mm -hmm. but we have no way of knowing if almost there means. Mm. Has anybody just push them towards the May 15th uh, bond deadline? I, I had a conversation about that with Colleen um, three or four days ago, I think on Friday. Mm -hmm. She, uh, Ben Green is his name. Um, and she was gonna call him that afternoon and try to get an update and, and push a little bit. Um, We've, we've sort of been working most closely with the engineers from DNK, and they always say, you know, we're in close contact with Ben Green, we're on it, we have back and forth conversations every week, we're confident it's going through, we're, they're just finalizing this and that. Um, and we're thinking, right, at some point, we need to push them more. And because it has so to be part of the bond exactly. application, right? For sure, right? You need permits to be issued before the bond application. I uh, Not don't necessarily, know. but I would not want to go forward with the uh, construction until right. we had the permits for sure. Right. I think we could yeah. go ahead and do the bond application, and we don't have to. Uh, Tom told me there was, um, I can't remember the amount of time, but we have something like a month after that to say, yes, we want the money, we want you to issue the bonds, or no, right. don't do it, we'll, we, we withdraw and we'll go into the next round. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, it, Gabrielle, you would like something added to this that says that uh, the CPA will do regular updates in front porch forum as work progresses. Well, would it, do other people think that's appropriate for them to take that on rather than the select board? I do. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I think they probably will anyway, but right. I don't, and so they no shouldn't have a problem with us putting it in. So, um, yeah, sure. Yeah. What about the rest of you? Anything? Yeah, I think that's why. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't have it. I don't have nothing. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> you all think it's good? It's like him and technology. I'm like, oh, that's her. I see Jordan's brain cranking there. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's There's smoke coming out of your hair. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder if there, there should, uh, again, the, the town is very much taking ownership of this project at this point. And, um, uh, and I think it would probably be worth, you know, not, not just having something in front porch forum, but probably assuming a dedicated page within the town website to the project. Mm -hmm. um, I like it. Uh, that would not be terribly costly. Uh, we could charge the CPA with um, uh, with content generation on that page, um, but and then that would drive largely what gets posted to. Um, Front porch forum, um, but I think it would. I think it's meaningful for that that communique to be coming from the town um, to front porch forum, and we can lean on the CPA to be generating what those updates are, and then and making sure that's on the on the website, and then just copying front porch forum. But it also kind of documents that I think in a really important way on the town website, just for just kind of a record of the project, um, and kind of a timeline of the project as well. It would be easy to set up a, a page and have sort of a general description and then use the 
documents feature similar to the public notices page on the site. So it's like the date and the update in chronological order. Yeah, I think having an introduction to to the project on that page, having uh, whatever we know has dates um, for the project, um, and, and defining those as, as they become defined, so there's a timeline on there. And, and it could link to the Curtis Pond Association website, which has an enormous more information than anyone will ever read on it. <laughs> That's an excellent web uh, suggestion because during the town the years of the town hall renovation, there was a town hall renovation page. Yeah. So we would also want to include the primary contacts for each yeah. group and who people can be directed to with more, for more questions or information. So I will add both in our duties that we will maintain a website. <laughs> Which will uh, yeah, include a, a page. Yeah, a page. A web, I'm uh, sorry, a page on the web. Yeah, the web page, I did say that right. Call it, yeah. A web page. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, and that uh, the CPA will do regular updates in Front Porch Forum and uh, and add them onto our web page. Yeah, or, or um, collaborate with the uh, collaborate. Okay. Uh, with the webmaster <laughs> to keep all information on said project page yeah. updated with okay. regular communication and, and important dates. Okay, good. Anything else no, you're thinking? Yeah, no, just uh, I want the communication. I just don't want to have to do a whole work. bunch more work to make it happen. So. Oh, it'll be summertime. <laughs> no. You won't have anything else to no, do. No, I think that, that's the CPA part for sure. I just, yeah. I, just I, w I want the to kind of the, the town to take yeah. ownership of the both the repository and the, and the outward push. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one question. I assume Mark looked at this. Um, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the dam, the section 4B, dam failure, um, the town shall no, have no obligation whatsoever to return, refund, or repay to the CPA or any of its members any expended or encumbered... Oops, that was supposed to say unexpended. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Or expended. No. 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 It should be expended. It should be expended. No, that's right. We would. It should be expended. Any expend? Oh yeah. Okay. You're or right. Encumbered. That's right. We would only return unexpended funds to you. Is Unex that clear though? Because the net it goes on to say delivered to the town by the CPA in connection with the work, or provided in connection with this agreement. So I I read that as potentially including unexpended funds that were transferred to the town for the project, but not spent on the project. Is so that... how would you change, I, I'm not sure why you're telling me how, tell me how you would change it so that I understand that. <laughs> Somehow saying that unexpended funds or excess funds shall be returned. Shall be returned. Okay. Well, I could say unexpended or un I, or encumbered. Uh, unencumbered. I I just am thinking if you know we if the CPA transferred you know two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and for some reason the project went belly up and never happened, and we didn't, the town didn't spend any of the money, one would assume that the money would be returned to the donors. Well, I'm not sure I'd agree with that, because at that point, that also assumes that we're locked into a bond that we also can't pay off early. So, mm -hmm. uh, I would say that the town, so the, the town, very thoughtfully a long time ago, created a dedicated account for the Curtis Pond project. That's an account that we can 
add a lot of transparency over the expenditures that are going to be coming out of that fund, which these funds will be transferred to. I would say that in the rare situation that there are uh, unused funds, that those funds could be left in that account and used for the service of the bond. Well, that's why it says um, encumbered. I would consider those funds encumbered. encumbered. So under what circumstance would there be unencumbered funds? Um, they give us all the money, and then we no bond, we nothing, we just... Mm -hmm. And the bond be, and the, you know, assuming the bond's paid yeah, off. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, so the third, like... Get as far as a bond, but we have their money in an account, and we just... It's not going to happen, they wouldn't give us the permit or something. So nobody's been spent, nobody's been taken on behalf of the town. It's a pretty unlikely scenario. Or if there is a dam failure and then there's no way to reconstruct the dam, then there's unencumbered funds because none of the money has been spent, which is also an extremely unlikely scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me think about that. <laughs> I mean, is that assuming that the that that happens after the bond has already been yeah. repaid. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense. So we've got we've floated the bond, and then for some reason we have to stop. We still have to pay off the bond, but then the bond money would go into the general fund. I guess it's in our general fund. We've got the money. Could the bond money go into the Curtis Pond Fund to repay the Curtis that's Pond bond? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's what I'm... I, I, uh, we would, I think we would have to, we should probably talk to um, Tom about what those bond funds can be put towards. Yeah. I don't think, I'm pretty sure I remember him saying that once you have bond funds, you can't just, you can't put those towards other projects. They can't, even though it will, because of our accounting practices, it'll go into the general fund. They can't be, they can't be applied to other, and I think you went as far as to say it's, it certainly has happened where a bond has been issued and the, and their, whatever the project didn't move forward for one reason or another, but the town uh, is still on the hook for, for the bond because the bond has been closed. Right. And then what do they do with the funds, with this big giant loan they got? That's what I'm, you said that we can't use them for anything else. I Let me ask know. Sandra that. Sandra yeah. has done Sandra bonding. She'll, she's likely to know the answer to that. Also, okay. are, are funds used for future maintenance? Like, what's the agreement about future maintenance of the dam and the, the funds that the Curtis Pond Association has raised? Do, does that... Pre presuming. I think then it's on us after that. Yeah, the town's going to own it. Yeah, but if there is but, but like I think left, if there's leftover money, uh -huh. it would stay in the Curtis Pond. Do we need account. to specify that? I'm not sure what it, it say it again. If there were leftover money at the end, we haven't expended all the bond money or whatever. Right. Okay. And they were raising more money over the summer. Um, to lower the bond, can that money stay in the Curtis Pond Fund and be used for dam maintenance? Be used for maintenance, okay. And do we know what maintenance looks like? How much it <clears throat> costs on an annual basis to maintain a dam that we're <coughs> responsible for it? I, I don't. Um, I know that early in the project, we looked at two different, entirely different dam models. Mm -hmm. One of which would be significantly cheaper, but need a lot of annual maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, and be a lot That was the Adobe model. Yes. <laughs> but that's <laughs> very scary. So Sorry. Play. <laughs> that's late sarcasm. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the, the plan that we went with was the plan that wasn't expected to have um, 
maintenance. Like significant maintenance. annual maintenance. Okay. Fees. Got it. Probably be good to get that sketched out at some point, like what yeah. future maintenance costs are. Okay, so um, I've got some work to do. Um, why don't you guys keep thinking about this and send your thoughts, and I will collect them into a document. Okay. All right, and we'll put this off to the next, or even maybe the one after that meeting. I don't think there's a hurry. On well, are we okay to move forward without an MOU with the CPA? Well, no, I'm, I would put it off. I would, but we're rewriting it. We don't have to do that immediately. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We, I mean, we're operating on the old memo, so it's Oh, okay. Um, so we're still in a um, So I'm going to um, rewrite this based on the discussion we just had, but I think we should stop for tonight. And if things come up into, to your mind during the week as you're thinking about it, or during the next two weeks, <laughs> um, send them to me. And I'll include them. Okay. Oh my gosh, guys. Um, what? Where's my agenda? We. We. I wonder if there are any. I got it. Thanks. Uh -huh. um, we kind of done East Montpelier Fire Department. Oh, Curtis yeah. Pond. Do you have anything else you want to report uh, out at this point, or is that? I don't. We're so. up to speed now. Okay. okay. Uh, Jordan, anything quick on documents? Uh. Other than it's moving forward, so uh, we communicated a, a final list. I uh, went over a final list of email accounts and their licensing levels um, with Barbara and Tegan um, on Friday. Uh, and RB has that and is procuring the licenses. So uh, they also have the uh, access to the domain that we need uh, because they already have the credentials so they can set this stuff up. I think hopefully, I don't, they haven't given a time frame yet. Um, I'll follow up with that tomorrow, probably tomorrow. Do uh, they need our computers? Like do we need to go in and spend time with them? So uh, the rollout is still a bit of a question mark and uh, Tegan and I were talking about that a little bit um, I think uh, the way that we should probably do it um, is to have them train some trainers. So that'll probably be myself and Tegan um, to get a initial lay of the land as soon as we have some accounts set up. That'll likely be, we'll start with like the office staff and some of the machines that will need to have licenses activated on those machines and then um, we'll kind of kick the tires a little bit see what part of the problem is that I haven't used like the teams and the um, spaces uh, or it's a, the document sharing platform that Microsoft uses it's something spaces um, uh, shared space um, so I'm going to have to get introduced to that and familiar with that before I can advise how to move stuff over from uh, from the Google Share Drive that we've been using and setting that up. Um, so there's going to be that kind of transition period first. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of my, the, the big question is like how it's going to interact with uh, machines like ours, which are uh, not in our full personal control. Um, so I've offered myself up as a guinea pig to see how that looks. Mm -hmm. um, and then once I have a better idea of what that looks like, then, then we can kind of roll it out. There's always the default of just using everything that's browser-based, um, which so far, everybody has said that is great. You know, it's a great resource. It's a fully featured browser-based platform for all of the apps, like the Word apps, and, and it still has access to the document sharing in the same way. It's just browser-based. So I've been kind of pushing for like the select board accounts and a couple of the other accounts that are gonna be like heavy usage um, uh, to have the option for uh, downloading uh, the apps uh, locally onto machines because we're a rural community and not everybody's going to be performing that work 
while they're connected to the internet, presumably, um, or at least it'd be nice to have that flexibility. Um, so that's kind of why we have to feel that out a little bit. So if we do run into roadblocks um, or some functionality that's problematic on trying to activate the licenses locally, or at least just managing local, multiple local licenses on the computers, uh, <clears throat> we'll always have the, the browser-based application that we can fall back on. And it'll be a little bit of a waste uh, of a license because we're not actually using the, the access to the, but we can roll that back in the next year. We can also upgrade anybody um, throughout, like early, if we decide that we want more people to have more functionality for one reason or another, we can always increase the plans. Uh, mm -hmm. You just can't cancel them. You commit to them for a year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's kind of the state right now. We're focusing heavily on trying to get the office implemented and some core machines implemented with licenses, and then, um, and then we'll have a training session that we'll have to schedule either individually, probably with, with me, um, Tegan will be up to speed enough that she'll be able to kind of offer some initial support and troubleshooting, um, but RB is also available. It's just, okay. we're just trying to sort out what's going to be the most efficient. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, collective bargaining team, you got anything to report? No, we're meeting this week. Wednesday. Uh, yeah, Wednesday um, is our first closed negotiating meeting uh, with the union representative. Um, so that'll be closed to the public and with the bargaining team. And we'll go over the first draft of the agreement. And our lawyer. Yeah. Yep. Yep, no, she'll, she'll definitely be there. Did you say that's this Wednesday? Yeah, it is this mm -hmm. Wednesday, yeah. It hasn't been warned yet. It doesn't need to be. So oh, okay. there's, okay. there's an important kind of differentiation between the meetings that are dedicated to, uh, like, that are negotiating meetings. Okay. Um, negotiating meetings are, um, are closed to the public, and they, are, they don't have to be warned. Okay, um, cool. So if we have... In between, there's there's likely going to be several of the uh, negotiating meetings. Um, any meetings of the uh, bargaining committee uh, in between those schedulings uh, will have to be warned. So we'll just keep you apprised of those. But at the moment, the next the only thing that's scheduled at the moment is this next one, uh, which is closed to the public and would be. Thank you. All right. Um, well, Rhodes is next, but I'm wondering, um, we kind of talked a bunch about Rhodes. Sure. Could we just sort of put that one aside till John's the next meeting? sitting here waiting this whole no. time. Oh, oh my God. God. I know. <laughs> Jimmy and I would like to take these 45 more minutes. So no. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys are with water. Yeah, water. Yeah, so with the water, and I think there's probably stuff that we're going to have to talk more about, but they tested for bacteria, nothing else. So. You don't have bacteria. It's potable. Really? It turns your so, toilet so, strange so colors. Should but it just been a, a should it have what should we have requested a more in in depth water um, test? I don't So it's you know, there's like like we don't know if it's hard or, or what makes it so funky. Uh -huh. And I, I don't know if that's still, and certainly you don't have to, you know, but I have gotten the sense from some of the crew that even um, because it is funky, even with like a filter, you know, may not have a comfort level drinking it. We did get a quote. Did you get that? I will, I don't know, Jamie, I'll make sure that Toby had just sent it to me. Like, yeah, so with a, a filtering system, um, that is, I, I, kind of pricey. So, um, back up to you say it's potable because it doesn't have bacteria in it. Well, that's what Toby had said. So that's uh, what, what I'm sorry. So that Toby had commissioned it and said it doesn't have bacteria, so the water's 
by. So that's not, just because it doesn't have bacteria doesn't mean it's potable. Cause I've had, we had a, a water system failure at our house where it was coming out brown and it was not a bacteria issue. It was a heavy metal issue. And um, it was manganese actually that was turning it brown. And um, yeah, it was definitely far from, from potable. So um, yeah, I, I think. I didn't find the water test to be super expensive. It's my recollection. Yeah, it just seemed to me that it wasn't an in-depth enough water test. Yeah, but I mean, to go and actually go and test for all those things that might contribute to the funkiness, yeah. I don't think would be prohibitive. The, the filtering thing is obviously very costly, so I really want like to know. Like what? How much? I want to say 3000 Mm-hmm. How much? I want to say, I would have to go back and double check. It's yeah, it's, we're three hours in now, so my brain, but I, I was, it was in the thousand, I want to say three, but don't quote me, or I just quasi quote, it. okay, I can send it to you, but, um, yeah, if that's something that would be okay for us to do, I would like to check more boxes on that. Uh, Who's, who coordinated the testing? Toby did, and he used clear water filtration, which made sense at the time, but I wondered if we need to go to Endyne and have Endyne do a test, because I think they do a more significant, across the board, what's really wrong here, that kind, kind of test. It, okay. oh. so it seems like it's the same, it, Isn't it the same comp? The, the invoice says clear water filtration is the address, but it has the Endyne oh, it logo does. at the top of the page. Yeah. I they just, seem to be connected. I, just, yeah, okay, I that, think it's what you request because they had just the bacteria check. Okay, because it just because I was surprised it was only it was only a hundred dollars, and it just seemed like maybe it was because it wasn't an in depth enough test. But I don't okay. know. All right, so you would like authorization to do the more expensive test? Well, just at least test for you know as you're saying you know metals and other things that right. may not. Uh, so, question, does that come out of the highway budget? Yeah, I The highway so. budget is good. Uh, yes. It's coming yeah, out yeah. of the general fund, I might feel differently, but the highway budget does have money. The, the, according to the um, invoice form where we requested the test, there's a lot of different tests they can do. Yeah. And it lists a list of <clears throat> 20 five plus different metals they can test for uh, that cost between 50 and $40 per metal. Oh, that's, <laughs> so that's weird because I don't know if it's because it's a, it's not a residence, but it didn't cost me when we, when we had to deal with our water situation, that's, we weren't, it, it didn't cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get our water tested. It cost quite a bit of money to repair the, the pump and the, and the well, but it, the testing is, I don't know. Well, it sounds like you need to go, somebody needs to call these folks and ask them what they recommend as a next step. What about the health department? The health department website? Well, I would think these people, yeah. But I'm just thinking that these people who are experts It'd be good to find out what they say. It may be easier for us to just go get our water. Yeah. Forever? Yeah. That's what we've been doing. We're fine with that. I know, but it's still good to know. We're not going to use it. We're not going to drink it. We're good. Why don't you guys... A lot of stuff off the table right there. <laughs> Why don't you guys continue this conversation? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Um... And we've already talked about the signs a bit, and I think... Can I do, like, a one-minute update on the signs? Of course, yeah. Um, we had asked Toby to look into the return policy on the road signs. Uh, he sort of put the ball back in our court, um, and I have called the company twice. And they haven't called you back? And both times I got a person on the phone... They were very friendly. Mm -hmm. I asked the questions, explained the situation. They said they had no idea they'd have somebody else call me back. <laughs> and they never do. And they never do. And they me never back. do. It's very sad. Um, so that was my experience my, too with them. Yeah, email and phone. How about if Barbara took them on? So I would just want a, another 
meeting with you to get yeah. up to speed. But also, maybe what I'll do is go to Marlin Control's website first and see what their return policy is. That's a good idea. And, and we should chat more because it may be that, you know, at, at, at some point, I, I reread the original proposal by the original select board, which was specifically for two portable signs and what, there's seven, I think, that are considered not portable. Um, and so if the issue is, you know, we don't like them because they're not portable, the ones that weren't intended to be portable, maybe we're okay with them not being portable if we just well, the issue is, I stop. thought that they don't work. We thought we were going to be able to move them around, yeah. but it turned out and we can't. You can't. And right. you still have to and, modify them. In and a they way had that. represented that it, they could. That when we bought the extra bases based on that mm, representation. Right. That's that, what the so, understanding at the time yeah. was. Yeah. We so, never got that other part. The collars. Huh. Oh. Yeah, so they'd flop over. They'd be top heavy. So oh. more work to be done. I'll follow up. Yeah. Time. Okay. Oh my goodness. I guess we won't do rules of procedure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we made it through April. Congratulations. Right. We can and be I meant to make oh. copies for each of you. I sat down this morning just for fun and wrote down all the stuff we accomplished <laughs> oh my gosh. in the last month and a half. I, I'm, I'll just pass it around if you want to take a look at it. I may have missed some things, too. I, I would um, say it should go in the file. But it's really quite <laughs> astonishing. I, I will, I'll send it out to all of you. I do have a quick question before uh -huh. we go. Seeing as I'm going to miss a scheduled meeting, but on May 2nd, oh, yes, thank is the Canning Commission big, yeah. big meeting before we meet with them the following weekend? Are they, no, we, so on the 8th, they're coming to talk to us about the changes, but are we expected to be at the May 2nd? I have it in my book. They On the right day. We're the ones who are ultimately going to have to sign off on this thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so yes, if you want to get comfortable with it, I mean, you can just go ahead and read it, but if you want to ask them any questions, hear okay. their presentation, it's very dense, that's the place. Is it at 7? It's at 7, isn't it, Barbara? Yep, seven is what I have. Seven o'clock here. It's on my calendar. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like it was something that they had, that they want us to go. I mean, oh, they, they, they go really do, them. because yeah. otherwise yeah. they're going to come here and present it to us, and we're going to start bombarding them with questions. So you're like, I don't like that. Go well, back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a core kind of efficiency of the process yeah. Yeah. because the, exactly. what they're going to be presenting to us on the 8th ideally would be something that we would be comfortable you know taking action on yep. in the morning so okay. if if we if any of us have um, uh, have feedback oh. <laughs> that they that we'd like to see represented in the May 8th meeting then it, it'd be most appropriate to give it in the in their meeting in their hearing you said uh, May 8th not May 3rd I heard I thought I heard oh. May 3rd which is the so day May after May 2nd is May their 2nd regular is their... meeting uh -huh. May 8th, and May 8th is our select board meeting where we will be going over it with them okay one question I have if if we're all attending as members of the public and not discussing business, it doesn't have to be worn separately as a select board. That's meeting. correct, because However, it's informational. Right. But if we're sort of all sitting together and collectively asking them questions, does that Don't sit get in the gray area? We're <laughs> members of the community, so yeah. if we individually go and have things that we would like to see addressed, so as long as we're not having cross dialogue about you know what as a group yeah. we would like to see or or you know taking straw holes or like it right. uh, or taking any action you know we're we're prov providing feedback to within their hearing so we can ask each other clarifying questions each we, other i guess but why would why would you do that or they'll say i don't hear something or Oh, you know, yeah. I don't know. Well, oh, sure. We're just gathering information. We're not 
doing anything, you know, mm -hmm. discussing changes to it at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's there here. So yeah. we would be directing any, any questions or clarification to, to them. So do you have a time and a location for that time? Uh, it's here time? at 7 p.m. Here? All right. I, I, I lost track of the things that you guys were signing tonight. I have up as for years. And the rest, I can't see. Here, here they are. And yep. Can I just glance through those really quickly? Sure. Yes. yes. I have them, Barbara. We'll, let's do this after we adjourn. Anything okay. else before we adjourn? Okay. I declare this meeting over. Yeah.